now, your Musky Spirit Squad! Good evening, welcome from Community Stadium in Muscatine, and welcome to another season of high school football here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Hello everyone, I'm Roland Glenbine alongside Chris Anderson. It is great to be back, and boy, I tell you what, I haven't felt this much anticipation to a football season here in Muscatine, Chris, in, in quite some time. It has absolutely been a while, I mean, I think Anybody in town who doesn't know the name Ty Kozad and get excited when they hear it is crazy. I mean, it's just that simple. You know, and I, I was thinking about this. It's kind of like when Joe Wieskamp played basketball. It's kind of that feeling like, what's he going to do tonight? I, I got to be there. He could go off for 10, 12 three-pointers. He might score 50 points. It's, it, what Wieskamp brought to the court in basketball is kind of like what Ty brings to the football field. You don't know what the kid's going to do. He might hit four or 500 yards, six touchdowns. Who knows? And what's crazy is, you know, you go back and look at last season. There were games where we literally did not attempt to pass. Yeah. Everybody knew the ball was going to Ty. And yet – Three, four, five, six, seven, seven thousand four hundred thirty-two yards in like two games, and here we are again, right? Eighty-five percent of the total offense came from number twenty-four last year, and and you, like you said, defenses. I have a good friend of mine who's a defensive coordinator up at Davenport North. He talked about it. You, you, you game plan for it. You know what's coming. <laughs> they still could not stop him. Yeah, and it's it's going to be exciting because we've got. The Tim Nimley factor, right? So, you know, Tim was a tremendous back here for two, three years, all-around athlete for that matter, and he holds the career rushing record. Yep. And it's within striking distance tonight. Tonight. Yeah. Like, and he's in the first game of his senior year, and he only rushed for 500-ish his sophomore year. Yeah, did not play varsity as a freshman, right. and just. Uh, 497 yards, give or take. It depends where you look. Uh, his sophomore <laughs> year, it, it just shows you. Yeah. It, it, and and the other thing is, a, a lot of these records, you look at players from around the state and the numbers they put up. They're playing playoff games too. They're playing 10, 11 games a year. Uh, you know, yeah, that's not the case here for Ty Kozad. No, it, it's not. And you know, as you folks can see here. Now, one thing I do want to be clear about: the statistics on this are a little vague. There, there's a couple of yards here, there, either way. Uh, but Tim somewhere has has between 2,759 and 61 yards, depending on who you ask. So it ties about 180 yards away. Uh, we're going to go with the official Roger Bates calculation method. When Roger says he's got the record, that's when we're going to announce it. Okay. Um, so it's somewhere around 180 yards, which is completely doable in this game. Yeah. It, it could be the first half. It could be. This is a, a defense that's not one of the best. Uh, and I think that's a, a fair statement, and that's not to uh, you know make Jefferson feel bad. It's it's just it's just the reality. What it is, and you know they they we have many up, of those years. They they gave up 461 points last year. Now a lot of the players are coming back this year on that squad. But this is uh, and we'll talk more about the schedule as as the game, night rolls on. But this is the perfect starting game for this Muscatine team. It's kind of like what colleges do. You, you schedule that non-conference game, that, that kind of cupcake, and this is kind of what Muscatine has set up this year, not just tonight, but next week as well. It's the perfect two weeks, really, to start what could be a special season. It, it really it is. And, you know, one quick programming note here, folks, just so you know, uh, the sophomore game did run long. Uh, we are uh, five minutes away from the pregame activities. Actually, we're probably about to get the... Uh, softball team introduced and the new musky staff so we're going to turn it over to al hilton here for a couple of minutes uh, we're going to bring in the pa for you and then roland and i will be back in a few minutes after they get everybody announced and introduced for you Let's say Musky Nation is excited to announce the addition of the following teachers to our Muscatine High School family. Jesse Calderon, teaching ESL. 
our new head principal, Mr. Ryan Castle. Assistant principal, Rachel Pepe. Jose Escorcia in ELA. Courtney Hamlin, attendance clerk. Alexis Hopkins, library media aide. Reese Kilburn, business and computer science. And Hayden Stone, the vocal music department. Welcome to the Muskie family. take this opportunity to recognize our 2023 softball team who had an amazing season to play the way to a 34-7 record and a third place finish at the state tournament. The run including a quarterfinal upset victory over number two ranked Anthony Hawks. Team members include Caitlin Hay, Lily Gray, Cheyenne Mosier, Aubrey Bender, Avery Schroeder, Parker France, Kylie Salyers, Becca Hay, Mia Molina, Alexis Allen, Isabel Lama, Lucy Hoy, Skylar Peterson, Marie Garcia, Jenny Jarrett, Mara Kalupa, and Elsie Lewis. <laughs> Coaches for the Muskies, the head coach is Steve Hopkins. Assistant coaches Bob Gant, Jennifer Hay, Kaylin Salyers, and Avery Eagle. We'd like to take this opportunity to recognize all of our health care workers who are in attendance tonight. Please stand and be recognized. I had a, a great, great season by the, the softball team. And really, it's amazing the conference, the MAC conference representing in Fort Dodge this year. And uh, no doubt Muscatine, a, a big part of that, uh, playing in that tough conference. And it's fun to watch those teams all go up there and, and really succeed up there at the uh, state tournament in Fort Dodge. It was. And, you know, they were a fun team to watch all season. You know, I'm guessing the people that are listening now were also watching this summer. And the girls just – uh, they're great human beings. Here, here's the thing, and I told these stories I don't know how many times this summer, but, like, there was a time where we – game time got changed. The girls all – like, literally, I pulled up with our gear to broadcast, and the entire dugout of girls comes flying out to my truck to help get the gear to get it all ready so that everything worked. And then, you know, a couple games later, they're spending after the game with uh, – they had, like, all the young softball players from Muscatine – they came in, they set up this whole table down there. They had a nice, like, signing booth area. Mm -hmm. And they spent probably 45 minutes with all the girls. And then they did after they won the game to go to state. Yeah. They were out there taking pictures, like, I don't even know how long with all the little girls just to kind of, like, that's awesome. give back. It's great. That's awesome. And that's great for the program, too, because those little girls, that means the world to them. And then guess what? You know, five years later, they want to play softball. And, and if you get that kind of – that thing, I mean, that coaching staff, that's that's it, what you want to do to really build a community. It, it is, and that's, you know, uh, as we all know that, you know, as we sit here and look out of the press booth, as we look out towards the pond across the, the field, there's a big open field that by this time next year <laughs> will be a huge brand-new softball field for this team. And I, on one hand, I absolutely love it, but I do – the one thing I wish could have happened is some way to be able to keep it at Kent Stein where all those girls are around them all the time. Now, that said, I'm going to love the new field. So <laughs> I'm not really complaining too much, but um, it, it, it is a great function for while they were down there. Now, are they going to have air conditioning in the uh, press box there? I, I'm being told yes. Well, there you go. At least like a window unit, which okay. 
it gets pretty hot down at Ken Stein because it's at night and that press box down there faces right into the sun. Yeah. You can't see you. I mean, you can get sunburned <laughs> sitting in there well, broadcasting the game. Speaking of heat and air conditioning, we are so happy to have this new facility and uh, still can, we can still call it new, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and the air is working and boy, is it needed because it has been a scorcher of a week here uh, across eastern Iowa and it, it has not let up yet it's it's supposedly going to let up here in the next few hours and and uh, start to cool off but boy uh, still temperatures in the 80s and humid and it's going to be a factor tonight no doubt about it uh, hopefully uh, always week one it it's a, seems to be a factor with cramping and when you have this kind of heat that's something we're going to have to watch tonight as well Teams are uh, meeting up. The captains are meeting up at midfield right now as we have the coin toss. First I, one of the season out there. Well, the guys I don't know. are they? Are, are uh, we doing musky man? Uh, we may be going a little. I, I, folks, I'm going to tell you when games run over, the live production kind of adjusts here and there, and sometimes we just kind of roll with what happens in front of us, right? That's a good theory in life, Chris. Yeah, it is. So. We, we do have, looks like we're going to do the coin toss first. Uh, I believe, uh, yeah, the guys are out there right now, and uh, officials are talking with them, and we'll have that coin toss. Looks like we just had it, and uh, we'll just kind of try to read the body language here. So it looks like Jefferson won, and Ty said we want to go that way, and now we'll sort everything out right now. So... Jefferson did win the toss, and they will receive and uh, be going right to left in the first quarter tonight. So we're going to start off on defense. We'll have to wait a little bit for the uh, counting up the yardage for Ty Kozad on the evening, but the the defense will get their first crack at it against a, a, a Jefferson team that struggled last year, as we uh, kind of alluded to. A team that only scored 46 points all season last year, and uh, they gave up over 50 points per game. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they, they are on the rise, uh, no doubt about it. They, they got a nice coaching staff in there. Ed Miles the, is in his second year as head coach. That name might be familiar to Hawkeye fans out there. He's a, a former Iowa linebacker, actually played a – few years in the NFL as well with the Miami Dolphins and the New York Giants. So anytime you can bring in a former NFL player to pick up a program that's kind of on the bottom, that's that's what they're hoping to do. And they got some assistant coaches as well that have some name, especially in the Cedar Rapids area. Adrian Arrington, former University of Michigan wide receiver, is an assistant coach there at Cedar Rapids Jefferson. So you got some. Wait, uh, you, hold on. You just yeah. heard the magic word. And you said there's a, a Michigan player there? Yeah, former Michigan, yeah. Adrian Arrington is an assistant hey, coach. Seriously? At Cedar Rapids Jefferson, yeah. How did I not know that? I, I don't know. Go Blue, baby. Sorry, everybody out there. You, so, yeah, you all know me. You all you know go. you were going to get that. Adrian Arrington, if you did your homework. I, no, I, I, I put that paper together. <laughs> I just, I guess I wasn't really looking at all of the. Uh, um, there you go. So, yes, I, Adrian Arrington went to Michigan. He went to Cedar I, Rapids, Washington High School. And, yeah. And now he's an assistant coach uh, at, not, at Jefferson. I did not know that. So, so uh, yeah, to Synapsis, they, they got a nice coaching staff in in, in store there. And they, they, they're going to be a team probably a, a few years from now that can uh, start competing and stuff. But uh, it, it, still, they got some athletes and they got a lot of players coming back. So it, we're not putting this in the win column yet by any means. Yeah. But uh, this is a game that, that you like your chances at, for sure. Yeah, and again, like you said earlier, this is the kind of thing that you want to start off. You know, we, we, we are on this threshold, you know, where thinking back to when I was a kid, you know, we would go seasons without several wins. Yeah. And we, I think if we can get one or two things to break our way, get a little bit of excitement, you know, you look at the kids – that uh, we'll probably see a couple of them later that, you know, play youth sports, foundation football, and things like that. There's a lot of really good athletes coming up in that, you know, 7th, 6th through 8th, ninth grade. There's a lot of really great athletes. So if they can continue to play multiple sports and excel at them, mm -hmm. there's a bright future in yeah. Muscatine Athletics. No doubt about it. Uh, we 
We faced some of them in the baseball circuit this past summer. The Muskie Gold Travel Squad was a, a very good team for sure, no doubt. Um, you, you know, we want to talk about the schedule a little bit. And another reason, Chris, why I think this is really important to play Jefferson and then Central, perhaps your two easiest games on the schedule the first two weeks, is that Muscatine starting a sophomore quarterback, Engage Curtis. And that, that this lays out perfectly to get his feet wet, get him some confidence, get him playing against defenses that maybe aren't as tough as he'll see later in the year. Uh, this is perfect uh, synapses and a perfect, uh, you know, scenario is what I should say for Coach DJ Hawkins. You get that 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 sophomore quarterback and uh, hopefully some good things will happen. Uh, get him some confidence out there and uh, you know because uh, you know even Ty talked about it you, you, you like the quarterback and we'll talk more about it here in a second but first uh, we're going to have the the national anthem here so we'll, we'll we'll be quiet and honor our country. Muskie's playing the national anthem, getting us closer to kickoff. And before that, we were talking about Gage Curtis and a sophomore quarterback playing his first games. He doesn't have to do a lot, thank goodness, because he's got perhaps the best running back in the state behind him. But, boy, could he make a difference if he can do something. Yes. And, you know, we talked about this, uh, you know, because obviously I wasn't on the mic last fall, but – we talked about this often is if you can just threaten a throw if you can just at every couple series try and throw the ball over their head just enough to scare them so that they don't put 11 guys in the box mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to open things up and if he can just do that we're gonna be looking pretty good yeah and, and again it comes back to what did we see last year we saw all those guys in the box. We saw a quarterback that maybe couldn't stretch the field, and we saw defenses keen on Ty Kozet, and, and Ty still did what he did. Now you got all those offensive linemen are back, right? And they have another year experience, and then you get a quarterback that can maybe throw a, a pass downfield here and there, and you're going to be able to get a few guys out of the box. Now what can Ty do? Ty do? I, I don't. I don't even know. Like, <laughs> I mean, what what could he do? Like. Too many Christmas. Uh, it's going to be fun. If there's no other way to say it, then it's going to be fun. No doubt about it. And uh, you know, while we're talking about Ty Kozad a little bit, it's been a, an eventful off season for him as he uh, went around a, a bunch of camps. He put 10 to 15 pounds of muscle on, and uh, he had a, a, a commitment to the Air Force Academy. And uh, that uh, ended due to uh, Here some come health the issues. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. Guess who let Did him out on the field? I, <laughs> I, I, and it looked like somebody had already busted the M. I don't know what happened there. I don't know, but I, I, I 
Ty's pretty amped up right now, and that, that whole group is, but this is going to be fun. No so as you were it. saying. Yeah, so he, so he had the commitment to the Air Force Academy, was all on board there, and if you, if you follow him on Twitter or any of the social media, boy, you know, it was all about Air Force, and unfortunately that, that took a left-hand turn due to some health concerns and issues. Now that's all been cleared. As we understand, yep. Yeah, so, you know, the commitments are coming back in. He's got a commitment right now from the Naval Academy, which could be fun for him. Maybe you get a chance to play Air Force and, and – you know, be like na 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 na. Right? Did I just say that on the air? Uh, you did. I, I you just did. Said and it's week one. And uh, Brown University, so uh, Ivy League, which is fun as well because that shows you another side of what Tyco Zed brings and uh, the academic side. So uh, those are on board right now. Now, I, I did have a chance to communicate with them. And, and some bigger fish are out there as well, and they're going to start to roll in the offers from, you know, I would expect maybe Iowa State or some, some – uh, Big 12, Big 10 opportunities might come around once these numbers probably come up like we think they're going to come up. So it's going to be a, a fun thing to watch. He says he wants to, to have a commitment, though, towards the end of this season. So that's where he stands on what's after this season. But uh, this season is uh, about to kick off. Well, and, you know, again, as we say, it's all about staying healthy. It's all about doing everything you can to – increase the stock without taking unnecessary risk and uh yeah no doubt he needs to stay healthy and as does his whole team really and again the, the numbers are good but the numbers aren't what we see with maybe some other teams too and and you want to stay healthy and this is a, a week one again with the heat and the cramping that's that's you know don't want to even mention it kind of want to like no header jinx kind of thing here even talking about that kind of stuff. But but we're about to get underway here, and it's going to be the Muskies kicking off if you're just joining us. Jefferson won the toss and taking the ball, going right to left. Jefferson wearing the uh, whites with the baby blue numbers. Muscatine in the uh, all blacks, white numbers again. Those purple helmets, and we're about ready to get going as... Jackson Althmer will kick it away. Good to have him back. That's a, another part of the game, and uh, the kicking game was pretty strong last year. So it's good to see him uh, and his foot back out there. That should be a big bonus to this Muskie ball club. And, uh, you know, all the anticipation is about to end here. We're ready for some football, and we'll see just uh, what the defense can bring here. Ball is teed up, and we are ready to go on this 2023 Muscatine football season. The ball will be into the end zone and uh, touchback. So Offmer starts it off in style, and we will start off here on defense with the ball marked at the 20-yard line. Starting quarterback for Jefferson, he was the starter last year as well. Jeremiah Pfeiffer, a senior, six foot, 180 pounder. And Jefferson will start off with trips to the right. Solo back onto the left of Pfeiffer. And they will hand it off to start. And there's a flag on the first play, so a couple of yards, but that might be coming back, Chris. Holding. Myself. Yeah, that, there we go. Holding, so that is uh, coming back, and that's always something to watch in week one as well. How many flags? There's always seems to be too many, and hopefully you win that battle. Make less mistakes than the other guy. It's always a good theory in life, too. Uh, you know, it is. So first and 20 all the way back to the 10-yard line, and the defense can maybe pin uh, the ears back a little bit and what should be a throwing situation for the Jayhawks. Split receivers, Piper is back to throw. He lets it go, he's got his man, and a big gain first down, Jefferson. That's LJ Nenow Jr. on the reception, and now a late flag. That came after the play was over. Some words exchanged, and we'll see what the call is. The 
ball marked at the 35-yard line, and now we'll uh, figure out the yellow hanky. All the officials are going to meet. Well, kickoff uh, temperatures in the, the mid-80s. Hopefully the hottest game of the year. Stress on the hopeful. Can't imagine any hotter. You know, the heat's been a, a problem this week in practice, and, and interesting, Jefferson decided to change it up and hold morning practice. They, they practiced from 5 a.m. till 8 a.m., Monday through Wednesday, so the sun didn't even come up till 6.30, and they were out there practicing. I'm guessing the baseball field maybe. I don't know, something with lights out there on the west side of Cedar Rapids as they tried to stay cool, and those guys had to get up like 4 in the morning, so it's been a long week for them. Personal foul on the Jayhawks, so two flags already on Jefferson. That was after the play, so it's the first down will hold but it should be a first and 25 upcoming for the Jayhawks as they march it all the way back to the 20 yard line. So a little pushing there after the whistle. And it cost Jefferson a big 15 yards. And now they're gonna make it first and 10. So forgive me, I was wrong. It's first and 10. The ball is marked back to the 20. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a high school thing. The rules differ different levels and different seasons as well. And there was a nice pickup on the ground, about eight yards there. So the Jayhawks, when they're not shooting themselves in the foot, are moving the ball a little bit here over the first two plays. The market at the 28 yard line, second and two. And Defense just trying to just shake the rust off a little bit. Someone needs to make a play here. Tight formation. Pfeiffer under center. He'll throw it out into the slot. Has the man, has the first down. He has more. Tiptoeing down the sidelines. Again, that is nine now. All the way across the 35-yard line. So three plays in offense, two of them go for first downs, and uh, Jefferson showing some signs of life here early. They'll split two off each direction, back to throw, looking deep and letting it go down the sidelines as a man, and it's a big reception again. There's that man again, LJ Nineau Jr., all the way into Muskie territory. Jackson Othmer on the reception. Now Jefferson's going to go quick. No huddle. Back to throw again. This one into the lead off the hands of Carter Bronson. Maybe we're just going to employ the bend but don't break system here, Chris, early in this ball game. It absolutely works for me. So back to the huddle they go. They felt, the, felt they had something there with the no huddle. Now they're going to slow it back down. Nine out juniors set off to the right. He's been the go-to guy thus far. Man goes in motion, and the give is to the back, and not a whole lot there, maybe a yard or two up the middle. So good play on defense there. Now we got a third down and long, third and maybe seven or eight yards coming up here for the Jayhawks. That was Ishara Calolero on the carry for the Jayhawks. Pfeiffer's look good so far at QB. He's got his man, Nino Jr., off to the right, top of your screen. Man goes in motion. In the give. A little hole there up the middle. Going to be close now. A fumble oh. late. There was no whistle. But the officials are signaling that uh, the play was down. 
Looks to be short of the first down though. Fourth down and maybe a foot upcoming for the Jayhawks. Their kicking game, not anything stellar. They are gonna go for it here on fourth and inches. QB sneak and it looks like he got enough to move the chains. Players slow to get up, but they do get up in the first down and 10. Jayhawks knocking on the door. Not the way you wanted to start this. Someone needs to kind of step up here and, and make a play on D. Nine now, now set to the bottom of your screen. Pfeiffer will Hand off, not a whole lot there up the middle. Maybe two yards on the play. Second down and eight upcoming for the Jayhawks. Truesdale credited with the tackle. Second and eight, they'll send two receivers to the bottom, one to the top of your screen. Pfeiffer looks like he wants to throw here on second down. Two men in motion at the same time. That's gonna be a penalty. This play uh, will be called back. And I hate to say it, but I believe the coaches in the booth to the left of us noticed that before everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> It was pretty obvious. Everyone was kind of moving while well, those two guys were moving anyway, and uh, that's going to be the third penalty on this first drive, all on the Jayhawks. Well, it's a, it's a team that has not had a lot of experience, talking about Jefferson, a lot of experience with success. And, and when you have a team that's lost 26 straight ball games, like Jefferson has, you, you kind of struggle with success sometimes. So they've moved the ball downfield, but it's always like, when's the other foot going to fall? Right. And, you know, again, we've all been there. We've, we've all watched us grow through that. And as, you know, as the program started to continue to build on year after year after year, you see less and less of that. Mm -hmm. We've got another flag down on that incomplete pass. And uh, a personal foul on the Jayhawks, so their fourth penalty. And that's a big one, that'll be 15 yards. So Coach Hawkins will definitely take the flag on that. We mentioned the sophomore game that went a little bit long tonight. Uh, unfortunately, it did not go Muscatine's way. Jefferson won that game 34 to 22 this evening. So the ball marched back to the 39 yard line and it's a long way to go now for the Jayhawks. They gotta get all the way down to the 13 to get a first down. Quick math here makes that a, what, a second and 26 upcoming. Uh, according to the board, that's what it says. <laughs> I like to do the math instead. And there he goes. There's Nine Out Junior again. Now this time, no flags down. And he's been the star of the show thus far for the Jayhawks. You know, third down upcoming, but much more manageable for Jefferson after that big pickup of about 20 yards on the play. So call it third down and five. They'll mark it at the 18 yard line. Four receivers set to each direction. Pfeiffer out of the gun and now moving up front. Oh. And this time I think it's gonna be the Muskies committing the foul and that's, oh no, there was some movement up front so Check that, a little bit of movement draws Muscatine offsides and yet another penalty on Jefferson, thank goodness. I'm just gonna sit here and smile. Okay, well fans will appreciate that. I appreciate that, you have a beautiful smile, Chris. Uh, you know, I do what I can, folks. 
quick shout out to Brett Talkington, who uh, I know is recovering from some serious uh, strains and tears and just rough old racquetball time. So hopefully he'll be back uh, on the court Monday. Brett, best wishes. And meanwhile, the official said the penalty was on Jefferson, but then they mark it off on Muscatine. So I was right the first time, I guess. So the, the foul was on the Muskies. It is a first down, and there's a gain of a couple of yards. Everyone kind of getting back into the, the flow of things here, even the guys wearing the stripes. Second down and eight, and this is a, a five-minute drive here for Jefferson. And just kind of the, the, you know, we love defense like everyone does, but a lot of the fans here are, can't wait for the musky offense to take the field, and this is just building the anticipation. Piper back to throw, lets it go over the middle. A lot of traffic there, and the ball falls harmlessly to the ground. So yet another chance here for this musky defense to kind of get off the field. Third down and nine upcoming. Now we talked about the Jefferson kicking game. They were one of one last year from field goal range, a 22-yard field goal, but they were just one of five on uh, PATs. So a lot of uh, questions concerning their kicking game. This might be a four-down situation. Pfeiffer will look to throw. Looks into the end zone, lets it fly. The ball is caught down to the goal line, stretching for the pylon, but pushed out of bounds, marked inside the one yard line. Bradley Cable makes a nice grab and Jefferson's gonna go quick again. They get the guys off the field and they're ready up at the line of scrimmage. Quarterback sneak likely coming, Pfeiffer does that and stumbles his way into the end zone, touchdown, and the Jayhawks, well, they might have managed just 46 points last year, but they score first here tonight. A long drive, five and a half minutes down the field. That was only five and a half minutes of game time. That, well, that was felt like an eternity, didn't it? It did. We even talked about your smile. I mean, that's how long it really took. And Brett, man, that was a long, we had to fill a lot of air on that. Here's the, the PAT, and uh, they were one of five last year, but they're one of one this year, and hey, the Jayhawks are out to the seven nothing lead. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back with uh, Ty Gosehead in the offense, taking the field after this. experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated. Call us for your next remodel. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, the sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still with Huskies. Back here in Muscatine, the Muskies about to get the ball for the first time this season after Jefferson marching down the field despite four penalties. Some of them big too, a couple of 15 yarders still found themselves uh, able to punch the ball in. A one yard quarterback keeper by uh, Jeremiah Pfeiffer. That's the way the scoring starts tonight. I have a feeling that's not how it's gonna end though. I, I have a feeling that the Muskies are going to score in this drive, and they're going to take a lot less time to do it. I wonder, uh, how, how long does it take Ty to run straight 100 yards? As long uh, as 98. So uh, I will say I it's mean, probably going to be tougher for him to beat his single I guess run. he can do it in about nine point something seconds, but with the gear on and the, I don't know, we'll see. There should be another penalty, and I guess maybe not. The ball's fielded at the one-yard line. 
That was an interesting kickoff. Not a whole lot of room there. They will get it back to the 20, though. Not a bad return for the Muskies on their first crack at it this season. And Cooper Yao took the ball out to the 20-yard line, and here comes the Muscatine offense, led by, uh, we're just going to call him the best running back in the state, Ty Kozad, prove me wrong, and uh, a sophomore quarterback, Gage Curtis. Those are where our eyes are, but uh, they should also be up front because you got – Five starting linemen back and uh, can't wait to open up some holes against this Jefferson defense. So Kozad in the backfield under center of the young man, the sophomore, and here we go. Man goes in motion. Some movement up front and yeah. yeah. So that just lets Ty get five more yards. <laughs> There's that. There we go. Yeah, it was a 98-yard run last year, and I, I yeah. predicted it. I think I called you, it before. You did, and that was absolutely crazy. I have video proof that he yeah. did call it. I call it an 85 one right here. I First play go. from scrimmage. I think it sounds about right. I'm guessing he's amped up enough to do it. Yep. There he goes. Picks up a – oh, one. Oh. He is amped up, isn't he? All the way out bit. to the 30-yard line. One shoestring tackle away from taking it. And we got a couple of muskies slow to get up. That was that, that was close. That almost could have been the call. Yeah, it could have. So just shy of the first down as the trainer's on the field. Tending to the, the Muscatine player. Can't quite tell who that is right now. We'll take a quick break and be right back when the action starts. in a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated. Call us for your next remodel. Welcome to the future. Imagined by visionaries. Championed by leaders and focused on results. Made real through hard work and a determination to build the things that people count on. Places where ideas are born, where progress fuels growth and strengthens communities. It's work that makes a difference. United Rentals, you're building the future. We're here to help. We are looking for a zero-turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero-turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone can make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. physical therapy. Feel better, move forward. 
You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. Roland Glumbine and Chris Anderson back here in uh, Muscatine, the injured Muskie Lincoln Brookhart. Uh, something to his left leg. He did had no pressure on it at all as he uh, was helped off the field. So we wish him the best. We'll keep an eye on that. Meanwhile, second and one, full house backfield. And the give to Kozad. He makes two miss, and there he goes up the middle to the 40. Say hello, end zone, Ty Kozad. Didn't do it on the first one. He did it on the second. Now, the only bad thing about doing it in two like that is it cuts your average in half. <laughs> 71 yard touchdown strike by Ty Kozad. And now. Oh, do we have a cramp there? Uh, it looks like a cramping issue. Yep. And that is Kozad in the end zone. Ran so hard now that uh, he definitely just went down holding yeah. the back of his leg. That's that's going to be a cramping issue for sure as they go to stretch him out. And, and we, we expected to see some of that tonight with this heat for sure. But Ty Coe's had two plays, 85 yards, and uh, that drive took 27 seconds. So at that rate, <laughs> I'm not a math guy, but... I do know that that puts him about halfway to catching Mr. Nimley. Yes, it does. An extra point. Up and good by Upmer, and we are tied up. Seven apiece. 6.03 to go in quarter one. And you're watching the Muskies on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. When water service lines get damaged, customers often call us first. Remember, MPW is responsible for the water main. The water service line from the main to your home belongs to you. Damage is usually unexpected and repairs can cost thousands. So don't wait until a problem occurs, be prepared. Check your homeowner's policy and see if it's covered. If not, third party protection plans are available for water and sewer. MPW also offers the utility loan program with 0% interest and that may help. Learn more at mpw.org. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take- Robin Glenbine, Chris Anderson back here at Community Stadium. We're all tied up seven apiece. After a, a long, tedious drive by Jefferson to strike first, the Muskies take just two plays to go 85 yards, 71-yard touchdown run by Ty Kozad. Who else? And we are all knotted up 7-7 seven, uh, seven midway through this first quarter. And uh, two kicks, two touchbacks for Othmer. And here comes the defense, uh, hoping for a, a little better result here on their second try against this Jayhawk offense. Well, we're up here in the air conditioning, but it, we got the windows open, and you can just feel the heat just still blowing in through this window. It is still a muggy night out there. They they said that cold front was going to come through, but until I see it, I do not believe it. Trips off to the uh, short side of the field here. Interesting formation, and this is going to be a sweep play. A little jet sweep, and the defense, uh, they came to play on that one. Nothing there. A gain of maybe a half yard. Yeah. 
Yao on the tackle. Pfeiffer out of the gun. Three receivers, bunch close to the line. He'll give it off to his back and a lot of room to run there. And Jefferson trying to strike back to midfield and more. Down to the 20, down to the 10, into the end zone. And the Jayhawks have come to play, folks. Ishara Calulero taking the ball, 79 yards. Nothing else much quicker this time to get Muscatine the ball back. Okay, maybe got a little bit of a shootout here tonight. If nothing else, that would be exciting. Yeah. And it gives more opportunity for more yards. So there you go. And we get to spend more time together because we'll be here longer. That extra point is up and good. And the Jayhawks extend uh, to a 14 to seven lead. 5.09 to go in the first quarter. We'll be right back. Get closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support big brothers, big sisters. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day. Back here in Muscatine, Jefferson about to kick off, now leading 14 to seven after a 70 yard, 79 yard touchdown run by Kyle Lero. Kickoff fielded inside the five and the Muskies have a little room there. It quickly closes and they'll start things off around the 27 yard line. Jayhawks thought there was a fumble and the whistle had blown. It will be Muscatine retaining possession. Got her eye on the bench right now, just uh, watching as trainers continue to work on Lincoln Brookhart and work on that uh, lower leg. His pads are off. It looks like his night is definitely over. Dad did give a, a thumbs up, which is encouraging, but don't want to really speculate on to uh, what's going on down there. Meanwhile, we got five minutes to go in the first quarter, and the Muskies uh, back on offense after a, a two-drive touchdown strike on the first try. They'll uh, hand it off and gain of about four or five yards there for Truesdale, his first carry of the season. Second and five. And the give uh, this time again. Now a fumble. Whistles blow. Whose ball is it? The, they're going to mark that down. The Cedar Rapids fans are going crazy right now as they run it into the end zone, but the ball was uh, whistled dead. The Muskies will continue to hang on to it as, again, Truesdale with the carry. Now, we uh, don't. 
Meanwhile, we look over at the bench, and that's where Ty Kozad is right now. He's not on the field. He had some cramping issues and uh, is not out there right now on the second possession. Kozad uh, continues to get worked on on the bench, and the Muskies will try to find a way to get third down and four converted here without him. The give on the sweep and going nowhere on the play is Gavin Brookhart. Losing yardage, and the Muskies are going to have to punt. Now we got a late flag thrown, so we'll check on that. Coach Miles over there on the Jefferson sideline talking to the officials. It looks like this will uh, be a penalty on them, a personal foul. And that's uh, a big break right there for the Muskies. They were going to have to punt the ball after a three and out, but now that another penalty on Cedar Rapids Jefferson will result in a first down. Well, right now, as many eyes on the Muskie sideline as there are on the players on the field as they continue to look at both Lincoln Brookhart and work on Ty Kozad, who is laying on his stomach right now trying to get stretched out. Here's the give, and not a whole lot there. Four or five yards maybe on the play on first down as Cesar Garrido, the ball carrier on the play. Goes at his back up, has his helmet on. Continues to walk kind of gingerly though. Well, someone mentioned in pregame about injuries and staying healthy and it wasn't me. But I said to avoid injuries and stay healthy. And here's a, a big gain up the middle, and he could go all the way if he stays on his feet. And sure enough, the Muskies have tied it up. And look at Ty Kozad. He's running down. He, he got He's, almost as many yards oh on the sideline. Oh, man. Line. Don't only five do yards that, left. young man. You <laughs> Get excited. Let him come back to you. Let him come back to Dayton you. Dayton Truesdale, a big run. 54 yards. And the Muskies an extra point away from tying this up. Still in the first quarter, we got 27, about to be 28 points on the board. Kick is up and the kick is good. And we are all tied up with 2.29 to go in the first quarter. Muscatine 14, Jefferson 14. The bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support Big Brothers, Big Sisters. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone could make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf. Mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. 
From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. We are looking for a zero-turn lawnmower. Exciting first we, quarter thus far. Uh, just real quick shout out to the fifth, sixth grade muskies that are trying to jump up at the fan cam, but they are still too small. We'll get you right back to the action. Yeah, got to grow a little bit. They do. They've got a little work, but they've got a scrimmage against each other tomorrow. Uh, if you're bored and you want to watch some fun football tomorrow morning, swing out to uh, the high school here and you can watch the fifth and sixth grade purple play the fifth and sixth grade. Bulls. You don't have purple. to be bored. Well, I meant, like, if it's not your kid, you don't normally go to, like, fifth, sixth grade football games. Like, oh. is it 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock. Nice. Future Muskies, come support them. Yeah. Get a couple sponsors. We could even stream it for you. There we go. I don't know if you're going to get me down here at 10 in the morning, though. <laughs> we'll negotiate that. Here we go, Pfeiffer. Hands off and not a whole lot up the middle in that first down run by the Jayhawks. Well, 14 to 14, maybe not the game we expected, but it's been exciting thus far. Four receiver set for the Jayhawks. As they're back to throw, looking into the flat and overthrowing his intended receiver. So third down and long, and this is where you want to see your defense make a play right here. before is Piper in an interception. He, he threw 12 interceptions last year, his junior season. Rolls out to his left, throws it out into the flat and uh, leads the receiver a bit too much. Incomplete as they were trying to hook up with Carter Bronson and fourth down and we're gonna see our first, we should see our first punt of the evening. Seems like the perfect time to fake one, though. Nobody would be expecting it. No, not even me. You're not calling that one? I'm not calling that one. I'll call it. Fake punt. Bold call, Cotton. Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. For those of you that remember Tecmo Super Bowl, that's my jam. That's what you would do here. Although you couldn't fake in Tecmo, but. Uh, maybe they should have, because that is not a good punt. There is a flag down on the play. And that ball uh, bounces around the 40-yard line. And we'll check what the laundry is about. It's on the far side of the field. Although, speaking of Techno Super Bowl. Yeah. Color me wrong. Or does he remind you of Thurman Thomas running the off tackle where you can just bust him out and then go zzz, 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 run top to bottom of the screen and you score it every time? Now I know why you go to all these youth football games because you are bored a lot, aren't you? I think about the past a lot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that penalty on the Muskies, uh, that will uh, go post possession and be marked off after the punt, so they'll push them back right around midfield. Uh, officially at the Musky 49. Have yet to see Gage Curtis throw a pass yet tonight. The sophomore making his first varsity start. Quick shout out to 
Grandy Little in Texas watching tonight. I like it. I wonder how hot it is there. Here's the give to Truesdale, and he crosses midfield. And now another late flag. The officials may be getting paid by the flag tonight because they are flying. We'll check this one out. Apparently, they don't want to get home tonight. Start an hour late. Yeah. Keep throwing the laundry. We'll be here a while. Well, Kozad's still trying to work that out, and he just doesn't look very good right now on the sidelines. So it's a yet another personal foul on Jefferson. Mark 15 yards off all the way down to all about the 30 yard line. Jaden Ortiz, yes, those are in fact purple helmets. Muskies are rocking new caps, new uniforms. Give up the middle, not a lot there on first down. And for those wondering, the, the training staff is retaping Kozad's left thigh right now. So he is not out on the field and the, the Muskies didn't need him on the last possession. They're trying to score again without him here as we're down under a minute to play in this first quarter. Sole receiver off to the left. Sophomore turns, gives it off to Truesdale. Truesdale's got some room, and he's got pay dirt. Thirty-two yard touchdown scamper by Dayton Truesdale, and the Muskies have their first lead of the season. Hoffman to try the extra point. This one, a little pressure. He gets it up and gets it through, however, and with 31 seconds to go in quarter number one, the Muskies out in front, 21 to 14. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience. We know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Welcome to the future. Imagined by visionaries, championed by leaders, and focused on results made real through hard work and a determination to build the things that people count on. Places where ideas are born, where progress fuels growth and strengthens communities. It's work that makes a difference. United Rentals, you're building the future. We're here to help. Did we mention quality matters? Back here at Community Stadium and uh, fun with math. We, we talked about that. We're on pace for a 84 to 56 game, by the way. Wow. And I'm guessing that would be done somewhere around midnight-ish. Did you calculate that one out? No. K-8 
Kickoff into the end zone, and once again, a touchback. At the four, four kicks, four touchbacks, Offmer gets the job done, and the Jefferson Jayhawks will once again start from their 20-yard line. Pfeiffer out of the gun here. He's got a solo receiver off to the bottom of your screen. That's his go-to guy tonight. And instead, we'll pitch it off to the back. Calero making some men move and miss. And a nice carry there. First down. All the way out near the 40-yard line. So first down, Jefferson, the clock uh, stopped on that play at 24 seconds. And goes in motion, instead the pitch to the back. Looks for some room along the sidelines. Again, we'll go out of bounds and, and stop the clock for us again. With 18 seconds to go. Little swing pass out into the flat and nearing the first down. Looks like to, uh, he's got it. And again, they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go. And we got another player slow to get up for the Muskies at mid, uh, in the middle of the field. Trainers go out and we'll tend to him. And uh, we'll take a quick break while we check on the injured player. Be right back. 2114 Muskies out on top. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler turf. Mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big... Ernest, the uh, injured player, is walking off under his own power. That's good to see. And we should be down to uh, the last play of the first quarter. First down right at midfield. Little sweep play, runs into a wall and out of bounds. So once again, we'll stop the clock and we will have another play. Jayhawks doing a good job of like, like running out of bounds here, like as if this was like the end of the game. You know, saving clock, extending. The more plays, the more better. Is that how that goes? Yes. Quick shout out to everybody out in Muskie Land. We are over 200 live viewers out there, not counting all the extra eyeballs, looking at all the extra screens, not counting all of us watching on MPW cable. So thank you. Go share it again. Let's try and get three, 400 watching. Yeah. 
Especially if we're still on at midnight. <laughs> we'll blow out the local ratings if we've got this many people <laughs> watching at midnight. Holy cow. So yet another flag on the Jayhawks. We'll push it back to a second and uh, 13. As this might be the last play of the first quarter. Might be. I was, uh, yeah, it might be. Optimistically hoping it will be. Here's the run up the middle. I don't see any flags. I see that clock moving, and that will bring us to the end of quarter number one. 21-14. Muscatine has the lead. We'll be right back. <laughs> Big box store, call Ribo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers so you know your hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see hustler quality for yourself. When water service lines get damaged, customers often call us first. Remember, MPW is responsible for the water main. The water service line from the main to your home belongs to you. Damage is usually unexpected and repairs can cost thousands. So don't wait until a problem occurs, be prepared. Check your homeowner's policy and see if it's covered. If not, third party protection plans are available for water and sewer. MPW also offers the utility loan program with 0% interest and that may help. Learn more at mpw.org. Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas, has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms. Back here starting the second quarter. Jayhawks facing a... Passing play as they throw it out into the flat and the uh, catch is made out there. Not a whole lot of yardage though on that third down play. A fourth down situation upcoming. We'll see what the Jayhawks coaching staff, Coach Miles and company decide here as the ball down at the 47 yard line. The first punt was nothing to write home about so they might keep the offense out here. It looks like they are gonna go for it on fourth down and long. Three receivers off to the right. Nine now off to the left and now Coach Hawkins wants to talk about it here and uh, pretty good chance, uh, really good opportunity to take the time out, make sure you got the right play called on defense, Chris, uh, on his fourth down play. Sorry, I had, I had muted myself as I was trying to fix a couple things. Sorry, my bad. Yes, yes. A, a little pause and a little recoup and a little recovery. Yeah, I mean, it's always you, a good thing. You got the timeouts in the first half. You don't really use them very often, and uh, this is a good chance right now. You kind of saw what Jefferson lined up. You saw what they were uh, maybe going to plan to attack and uh, talk to your defense. Get a stop here because you're up 21-14. You can get a stop and get the offense back out there and start to get a, a little bit of uh, cushion on your lead. That's the way this game's going. That would be big right now. So here we go, fourth down and six. Ball at the 47-yard line. And now the Jayhawks will come out with a diamond formation towards the bottom. And a flag oh. and an incomplete pass and all kinds of confusion. I don't think that play ever really got started as there was a flag and a whistle before the snap. Uh, and I'm not sure they knew exactly what they wanted to have happen there. So the flag will be on Jefferson and it will be Muscatine's football. It, it looked like they wanted to set up some kind of screen with the three blockers in front, but yeah, that. Uh, yeah, but the pass wasn't quite where you'd want it in that no. situation. And so I didn't know if it was like gonna be cutting back or if he was gonna kind of just follow right straight behind him. I'm sure it's something that looked awesome in practice, though. So now here comes the Muskie offense. 
trying to extend on this lead. And again, we have yet to see a pass thrown. Haven't needed to, but everyone's kind of anticipating to see the young man, Gage Curtis, throw, the, throw his first pass. Here's the give to Truesdale. Truesdale has some room to run. And Truesdale making the most of his opportunity here today. Another big gain, first down inside Jefferson territory. Again, the give to Truesdale, this time mad at the line of scrimmage and nowhere to go there. And again, if you're just joining us, Ty Kozad scored on the first musky possession of the night. Two plays, 85 yards, including a long 70 plus yard touchdown run but it came up a little gimpy on the play, kind of his hamstring, and has been dealing with those issues, trying to get that muscle loose. It looked like cramping, and uh, they've been working on that ever since, as this time the gain minimal again on second down, third and long upcoming for this Muskie offense. So again, he's just kind of uh, on the sideline, a group of trainers around him, and he keeps kind of reaching for that left hamstring does seem to be walking a little better right now on the sideline. And you know right now it's killing him not being out there in this situation against this defense. I'm and surprised we're not seeing like a one-legged hop like trying to get in there. But again, yeah. you know, let's be realistic. And, yeah. and we all know that Ty is excited. Here, here we go, and first pass, maybe. Looking, lets it fly, incomplete. And now a fourth down situation upcoming. But the important thing to remember is it's a long season. Yeah. Right. It doesn't all have to happen tonight. As much as he wants it to and as much as we all want it to happen for him, we can all take a breath, enjoy this, and keep rolling. Yeah, there are bigger games down the line. There's no sense, like, making a, a small injury much worse by pushing it too fast, no doubt. So now fourth down, what will Coach Hawkins decide to do as the ball lays at the 37-yard line? He has his offense out there and, and going to use that second timeout to talk about it with 9.47 left, and uh, maybe we'll talk about it here. First pass right there for the youngster came up a bit wide. This is definitely a situation where you would figure fourth down and eight, you would throw the ball again. I don't mind going for it here with the, where the ball is on the field. It's kind of a no man's land. You know, you're going to be right, you're going to be wrong. You pick something and run with it, right? Like, in a game like this, very early in the season, maybe you try something to see if you can do it, mm -hmm. right? Like, is this a spot where we feel like we can get fourth and eight? Yeah, and it's... it's you're not going to lose much. It would be a 54-yard field, right, field goal right now for Othmer, who, again, is one of the best kickers in the country. Right, which is it's totally doable. But do you want to give your offense a try? Do you want to see what they can do? And, uh, again, I don't think there's – Coach Hawkins can't really make a bad decision in this case. Yeah, and this is a, it's a comfortable – it's in the first half. You're leading by seven. So it's, it's just an opportunity to really learn what you have with this team right now. So we'll see what they dial up. as Curtis leads his team back out onto the field. And they are going to try a field goal. So here you go. Here's the chance for Othmer to uh, show what he's got with the leg. This will be a 54-yard field goal attempt for one of the uh, best high school kickers in the nation. Let's, let's check this out. High snap, kick is down. It's not, not going to be quite, 
quite there. So good effort, you, it was online. I think you get a little bit better snap. You might get a little bit more, uh, it yeah. looks like you got a little underneath it. Everything's gotta be perfect when you're talking 50 plus yard field goal attempts and that just throws off the timing just enough where you don't uh, center up enough on the ball. So uh, that would have been good from 40, 46 for sure, 47 maybe. But, uh, and again, again, still a good decision. Yeah. Why not? There really were no wrong decisions there. So it will give Jefferson the ball back, and uh, they will correctly mark the ball. And that's the other thing why you kick the field goal, because in high school, you get the ball at the 20-yard line. You miss the field goal, so it's the same as really punting the ball there. You still get the ball at the 20-yard line, which is probably what about what you would have done on a punt. The punt ball goes into the end zone. So, yeah, that's a good call Some, by Coach Hawkins. Somebody did some math there, and it uh, looked pretty good. Yeah, I like it. Now the defense needs to uh, give us something to like here. Handoff up the middle, and the gap closes quickly. There you go. That Who was is that that came in from the backfield? Holy cow. Sawyer Zach the in there for the tackle, so. Yao also there. Pardon me, from the secondary, not the backfield. Oh, I think we all knew what you meant. I'm glad somebody did. The call it second and eight is we're three minutes into this second quarter. Yes, second quarter. And the deep ball right oh now off the hands. Oh. That was a nice throw right there by Pfeiffer trying to connect with his go-to guy, Nainau, just off the fingertips. And third down and eight upcoming now for the Jayhawks. Twenty-one fourteen. if you're just joining us tonight, where have you been? Week one of the football season, we have an offensive firework-filled ball game thus far. Man goes in motion. Pfeiffer back to throw. Looks over the into the They're flat. Right that ball it. could be caught and intercepted, and sure enough. So the first turnover of the season, Cesar Garrido. Interception, and the Muskies have it inside of Jefferson territory. So there, there, there's our defensive highlight we were waiting on. Now what will we do here the, on offense right now is the Muskies come on out. I feel like we, we've gone a long time without a score. We just had score, 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 and now we're still 21-14. I think we're getting spoiled. Yeah. Truesdale makes a man miss. Runs through another tackle and a nice run by Truesdale. First down Muskies inside of the 30. I love the way he falls forward. Every time I've seen Truesdale as he's getting hit, he's consistently keeping his feet moving and falling forward. Get every bit of yardage again. Just a well-coached player there. So here we go, first and 10. Ball inside the 30. And uh, somebody missed an assignment there as Gage Curtis couldn't do anything. Turned around, was already being... Snared to the ground by the Jefferson defender. James on the stop for the Jayhawks and the second down in 12 upcoming now for the Muskies. I'm Roland Glenbine, he's Chris Anderson. This is the Muscatines, uh, Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Week one of the season, glad you could join us here. The Muskies and Jayhawks Putting on a, a bit of an offensive display thus far. Now a whistle is going to stop play again, and that's going to be the third and final timeout taken 
by Muscatine in this first half. We're going to go ahead and take it with them. We'll be right back. 7.37 to go in quarter number two. Rooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated. Call us for your next remodel. physical therapy. Feel better, move forward. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence. For Back here, timeout over, second down in 12. Big play upcoming, and we got some movement up front as we uh, switch around. First time we saw that this year. Jefferson did not bite, and there's the give to Truesdale as he picked up uh, a few yards, but that quickly stopped. Jefferson player without a shoe there. On the scoreboard, they're at halftime in Davenport, Assumption leading Solon. 13 to 7. Big third down and nine upcoming. Passing situation, perhaps. Instead, the give to Truesdale. Truesdale rumbles up the middle, and I think he got the first down. The rushing game hasn't really dropped off much. And I think a lot of that is credit to this offensive line. These are all guys that are back from last year and uh, playing with a lot of confidence up front to take nothing away from what Truesdale is doing, but those guys are opening up some holes for sure. Should never have to apologize for giving an offensive lineman credit. I'll, I'll check myself on that. And there's Truesdale again, this time a modest gain of two or three. We approach the midway part of this uh, second quarter. Next week's opponent, Davenport Central. They lead at halftime up in Clinton, 15 to seven. Showing blitz right now, and now we got some movement up front. We'll see. Looks like this is gonna be on Jefferson if the- Everybody's pointing. Everyone's pointing at each other, but I looked at the official and he pointed towards Jefferson. So, yep, they'll mark it off and that will make this job a little easier here. Second down in three upcoming. Quick programming note for next Saturday. We will be up at Davenport Central. However, Friday or Thursday. Or Thursday, Thursday, yes. Ne next week we will be up at Davenport Central. However, we will not be able to do video. We will be doing audio only. However, it will be available all the normal ways that it is. And there's the give, Truesdale, and no hold that time, and third down and three upcoming for the Muskies. Definitely in field goal range now, but uh, you kind of want seven. Ty Kozad again on the sidelines. He looks to be moving around better right now, but I have a feeling if we see him again, it won't be until the second half. And here's the uh, run, uh, trying the right side. Not enough, fourth down upcoming, and no uh, time to ponder this. Out comes the field goal unit. It gives us uh, another opportunity to talk about uh, Jackson Othmer. Why wouldn't you? Exactly. Again, Ty Kozad takes up so much of the breath of this team. But uh, when we're talking about positions and you talk about kickers, 
this guy is, is as good as they get. Getting a lot of attention from colleges, and, and why not? The great leg, consistent leg, and I'm hoping not to jinx him here on the field goal attempt. It is up, and it is good. Was that still climbing as it went through? <laughs> he got all of that one for sure, and that's a... That is a good field goal from 29 yards, and the lead extends. It's now Muscatine 24, Jefferson 14 on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support Big Brothers, Big Sisters. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo incorporated skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Roland Glenbine, Chris Anderson back here in Muscatine. The Muskies out on top, 24 to 14. Still four and a half minutes to go in quarter number two. Interesting score out of Bettendorf tonight. We'll tell you here in a second. That kickoff returned out to the 25-yard line. First time that the Jayhawks have got to return one tonight as Othmer has uh, hit everything else into the end zone. Bettendorf and Pleasant Valley uh, meeting tonight to kick the season off. And the Bulldogs have the lead right now at halftime on the Spartans. It's 16-3. PV losing to the Bulldogs. That is not what I would have anticipated you to say there. Yeah, PV, a lot of uh, preseason accolades for that team. As they've had a nice run really in, in all sports as of late. They've owned that, winning the last three against Bendorf in the series. As here's a lot of run, running room right now. And uh, he's going to go all the way. No flags down on the field. That is a touchdown Jayhawks just like that. 75-yard touchdown scamper. And lightning strikes again. And we're back to our offensive fireworks to the dismay of this home crowd. That Calalero, another long run and an extra point away from making this a three-point game. Huge hole there for Calalero. I think he went untouched. And Muskie's going to have to iron that out on the defensive side of the ball. That can't happen right there. Extra point is up, and it is good. 4.13 to go is now 24-21. Muscatine still out on top here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. When water service lines get damaged, customers often call us first. Remember, MPW is responsible for the water main. The water service line from the main to your home belongs to you. Damage is usually unexpected and repairs can cost thousands. So don't wait until a problem occurs, be prepared. Check your homeowner's policy and see if it's covered. If not, third party protection plans are available
season. They've scored 21 already tonight in the, the first half of game one of this season. Yeah, more on that game in Bettendorf tonight. The, the Bettendorf Bulldogs have scored on a fumble recovery and a blocked punt. That's basically how they got their first 10 points. And they lead that game against Pleasant Valley. Returnable kick, trying to find the edge, some room to run out across the 40 yard line and Darnell Thompson, a nice return for the Muskies. You know, Darnell is so much fun to watch across multiple sports. It, you could even just see he didn't go out of bounds. He was ready to put a hit on. He wasn't going to just, like, scamper out of bounds. That's how he plays every sport. It's a nice weapon to have on that return game for sure. He's a great leadoff hitter, too. So again, it's Truesdale in the backfield as the Muskies try to answer the quick strike by Jefferson. They're looking to, to blitz here, and there's the give to Truesdale. Nowhere to run is this Jayhawk defense playing a bit inspired right now, using the momentum of that 75-yard touchdown run. They're, they're definitely the team with more life right now out on this field. I think this will be a good time for Muscatine to figure out what they've got outside of Cozad as a team, right? Like, how can they pull together? He's on the sideline. You've got uh, Brookhart in there going. How do you get that momentum going when you don't have those 78-yard runs in your back pocket? And uh, looking to throw right now, Curtis. Curtis is going to keep it and uh, roll out of bounds after picking up yeah, about three yards. So a third down situation upcoming here as we are down to 3.20 left in the second quarter. Full house backfield, Curtis under center, blitz coming, turns, gives to Truesdale some uh, room there and he's got a first down. Well, nice design there. Running to open space was Truesdale and moves the chains inside of Jefferson territory. And again, that's another example of the offensive line doing everything they needed to do. Big possession here for Muscatine. Trying to answer back before halftime. Nothing else, you don't want to give the ball back to Jefferson right now without scoring. Again, that full house backfield. One receiver set off to the top of your screen. And there's the give and nowhere to go on that play as Angel Martinez gets his first carry and loses yards on the play. Here's a fun score for you. Cedar Rapids Prairie leads Cedar Falls 13 to two. Where are all these odd scores coming from? It's like, where what's that game that they play in the NFL where like the first time a score ever happens and there's only a handful yeah, left? Something gummy, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Score gummy maybe? And that play, oh wow. That looked like that was maybe gonna be a reverse. But the defense was there before anything could happen. Too slow to develop. And now Jefferson's going to call timeout as they look to get the ball back before halftime. So, Roland, in a case like this, are, are you thinking go for all 14? Are you thinking try and get into long field goal range? How, how would you approach this? I, I don't, I probably would give the ball off to Truesdale right now because that's been the most uh, successful play. I, I don't want the sophomore quarterback taking a chance right now. I, not, not in week one, I feel like you could easily throw the ball away right now and then all of a sudden you're losing at halftime. So, you know, I, I again, going back to Tecmo, you don't like being conservative. 
Right. But this is a great place to be conservative. Right. I, I would have to agree with that. Because, again, you're you're not that far from no man's land where you can take the long field goal, put them at the 20, and hopefully by that point you've maybe got a minute 20, minute 30 left, and hopefully the defense can keep them on the field, run the clock out, and get out to halftime. And this isn't a bad spot to end up punting, too, on fourth down. If you can get five, six yards here, you punt them inside the 20, make them try to go 80-plus yards in a, a minute and a half. So we'll see what uh, Coach Hawkins and his staff have dialed up. Third down and a long way to go, and there's movement up front, and that's going to make that's this job even harder as uh, Evan Frankie got a head start and got caught. Truesdale in the backfield, under center. Third down in a mile. There's the give to Truesdale. He tries to break the initial and can't. And now a late flag, and this, this will be interesting right here to see what this call was. Looks like a Jefferson player went kind of heading towards the tackle late. This might be on them. We'll see what the official call is here. Looks like uh, maybe a personal foul, and that that could be a big break right now for Muscatine. Personal foul. Sure enough, personal foul. As you saw that Jefferson player kind of dive into the, the ball carrier after he was down and kind of led with his head at that. That was an easy call for the official to make and a huge mistake for Jefferson. They were about to get the ball back right there. Instead... Automatic first down, and now the Muskies have a chance to score before the end of the first half. That's why you play the games. Yeah, sometimes the, the mistakes happen, and, you know, we can sit up here and prognosticate all we want. The coaches can plan everything we want, and then the play happens, and you're in a completely different spot than what you could have imagined. Yeah, it's, it's a tough break for them, but you, you got to be disciplined, and... And teams that have lost 26 in a row often are not disciplined. So timeout taken right now is this is more of a, a regrouping timeout for Jefferson as as things took a left-hand turn on them there out of nowhere. Now they're just trying to get their composure back on that sideline as the Muskies look to strike again and extend this lead before halftime. It's 24-21. We're still in the second quarter. Late start to this game tonight, and it's it's been a little slow going, but on the positive side, it, it is feeling a lot cooler outside. I think that front's kind of coming through, and and that will make everyone happy. As it's, oh, I just assumed that was our air conditioner kicking up a little bit. Maybe. Maybe I'm just trying to be glass half full. Someone else just opened up the door, and then I felt the heat blow in, and I'm like, oh, never mind. So uh, interesting sidebar, it is third down right now. So I guess the personal foul does not result in an automatic first down on the high school level, which seems odd to me. I'll go review the rule book tonight. I'll come better prepared next week. There's Truesdale with a, a nice run, but it will bring up fourth down. and. Here you are in that no man's land we talked about. The ball at the 37 yard line. That said, it's a good no man's land to be in. Yeah, especially with the clock continuing to run. This isn't bad to like let it run. They might even just take the penalty and then punt, but we'll see. Uh, they got to get the play in. The clock's down to 10 seconds, and they just get the play in now. So if you're going to actually run a play, you got to hurry. Play clock's down to four, down to three. I don't think they're going to get this off. And 
As the uh, Jefferson coaches right next to us get excited, it is going to be a delay of game penalty. Which again, as you said, not a bad penalty in this situation. No, and I think that's going to make this decision a lot easier right now as the punting unit will come out. With one minute on the clock. And uh, Othmer handling the punting duties this year. High snap. Jackson lets it go, and the ball will bounce at the 10, and oh, that is a beauty right there. It's down, down now. The flags come flying as, again, some extracurriculars after the whistle. And I think this is, again, going to go against the Jayhawks. Just an undisciplined group in this first half tonight. That won't cost them a lot in yardage, but again, it's just not something that leads to winning football. So 50 seconds around the clock, the ball was down inside the 10, and the officials are talking about it. You saw three different flags fly in. Pretty much every official saw that happen, and they're all getting their say right now, and I guess they've all had their dinner tonight, so they're gonna take their time. I, however, did not, if you cared, and I'm wondering what's going to be open by the time this finally ends. That's a good question. Uh, I remember a few games last year, I, I ventured over to the Muscatine McDonald's, and they're, they're not one of our sponsors, but they should be, because now I mentioned them. And uh, I'm not sure they're even going to be open late enough. I'm sure we can find, I know a couple people that own the restaurants, we could probably find something for you. Uh, So we're still kind of mulling things over right now out in the field. And it's been an, an exciting at times first half and it's been kind of a week one at times in this first half as well. A lot of penalties, a lot of uh, just sloppiness at times as well. So 50 seconds left. I don't expect Jefferson to be too aggressive here, but again, when you've lost 26 games in a row, maybe you, maybe you do. Maybe you just... You know, a friend of mine and I used to have these arguments back and forth, and you know, I'm a video game football player. That's all I am. I will never say I'm anything else. This is a spot where you throw a Hail Mary and just see what happens, right? Um, no, that's also why I'm not a football yeah, coach. No, that's, and you're in the minority there, but let's see. They do have some athletes, and they've shown it. The quick strike ability and back to throw, and that ball off the fingertips and incomplete as they went to their quick strike guy right there in nine out junior. It's kind of a, if, if you watch enough Hawkeye football, they would have taken the knee already, and we've been in halftime. But... I what they do try to do is just get that first first down. If you get the first down and then you get aggressive. Well, you know, I think in Ann Arbor West this season with McNamara, they're going to be able to not do that. So back to throw, rolling to the left. Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer looks and throws it into his bench. And now it's going to be third down. So now Muscatine might get the ball back. Now, now's where if I'm the coach right now, I'm Jefferson. I'm running the ball because Muscatine is out of timeouts. Yeah, you've got to just kill the clock. You have to kill the clock. You, you run the Don't ball you? and you kill the clock and you go to halftime. But I guess we're going to find out whether you have to or not. We'll see what Coach Miles does. He does send four receivers out. Uh, this has got draw play. Shotgun. Draw play yeah. written all over it though. And there is your draw. And the Muskies unable to stop the clock right now. That should bring us to halftime as the play clock just gets started. And I think we uh, will not see another play here. 
quick programming note at halftime, folks, remember as we show the band on screen, we won't be able to have the audio from that because, of course, Facebook and YouTube will put us in jail, kick us off the stream, potentially pull it a whole nine yards. So we will do our best to show you what the kids are doing, uh, but unfortunately we won't be able to play the audio with it. All right, and that will do it for the first half of the first game of the season. The Muskies fell behind, but they uh, take the lead into the break. 24 to 21. We'll be right back with the, the halftime show here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support Big Brothers Big Sisters. Rehab Physical Therapy. Feel better, move forward. When water service lines get damaged, customers often call us first. Remember, MPW is responsible for the water main. The water service line from the main to your home belongs to you. Damage is usually unexpected and repairs can cost thousands. So don't wait until a problem occurs, be prepared. Check your homeowner's policy and see if it's covered. If not, third-party protection plans are available for water and sewer. MPW also offers the utility loan program with 0% interest and that may help. Learn more at mpw.org. We are looking for a zero turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience. We know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. At Hustler.
Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support Big Brothers Big Sisters. River Rehab Physical Therapy. Feel better, move forward. When water service lines get damaged, customers often call us first. Remember, MPW is responsible for the water main. The water service line from the main to your home belongs to you. Damage is usually unexpected and repairs can cost thousands. So don't wait until a problem occurs, be prepared. Check your homeowner's policy and see if it's covered. If not, third-party protection plans are available for water and sewer. MPW also offers the utility loan program with 0% interest and that may help. Learn more at mpw.org. We are looking for a zero turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience. We know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Welcome to the future. Imagined by visionaries, championed by leaders, and focused on results. Made real through hard work and a determination to build the things that people count on. Places where ideas are born, where progress fuels growth and strengthens communities. It's work that makes a difference. United Rentals. You're building the future. We're here to help. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Have you heard the little thing? Rolling Glenn, I'm Chris Anderson back here in Muscatine as we uh, get you ready for the second half of action in a, a, what has been an up and down firework filled ball game. Not really what we expected in a lot of ways here as the Muskies lead 24 to 21. They will get the ball to start the second half and it looks like uh, they're going to be without Ty Kozad, who uh, was late to come out of the locker room, and uh, it just does not look anything except disappointed right now. So they might have to win this one without him. And, again, as you talked about, it's an opportunity for other guys to step up and uh, lead this team to victory. There's the kickoff, short kickoff. Got to get on that. That's a live ball. Muskies do. 
and they uh, don't do a lot, but they do get the ball, and that's the most important thing on that kickoff. Live ball, Aiden Lopez scoops it up, and the Muskies will start at about the 20-yard line. Well, if you missed the first half, we spent a lot of time talking about Ty Kozad, deservedly so, and perhaps breaking the record tonight for the all-time leading uh, rushing mark at Muscatine High School. And it looked uh, real promising. Two carries, 85 yards, including a 71-yard touchdown. But on that touchdown run, uh, hurt his hamstring, perhaps pulled it a little bit, has been trying to work that out all game long. He was late to come out at halftime, and uh, it just doesn't look like he's going to play here um, unless something crazy happens. But right now, his body language uh, looks like he is done. First carry there, and that's a nice pickup for uh, the Muskies as they get about six, seven yards on that. So you got to lean on some other people here going forward, and Dayton Truesdale so far has uh, shown some signs of things. And, you know, again, like we talked about, this is the opportunity for them. And Truesdale's doing everything that you need a back to do to step into a position like that. He's picked up the yards. He's kept his feet turning. He's changing directions when needed. Not a lot, but basically running up the gut. And it's going to give you the opportunity to develop outside of time. Yeah, and this is this is a game right now you just got to survive. You, you got to win this ball game. Uh, if you look at, you know, the goal, the goal is to make the playoffs. And it's weird talking about the playoffs in week one, but that's the reality of this. This is uh, one of those games that, that you got to get the W. Right. If you want to have that opportunity, yes. you absolutely can't miss the games that you've got to win. Yep. And when you're playing a team that's lost 26 straight, this is a game you got to win. And let's we'll see how they uh, get down the field. There's Truesdale. He's out to the 30 yard line, just shy of a first down. They'll bring up a, a third and about one for the Muskies. And again, sitting here at the start of the half up by three with your kind of heart and soul in some ways, been on the sideline most of the first half, that's not a bad place to be. You know, if you're Coach Hopkins, you can build from here. And, and it, it's not the only storyline in that first half. The first play of the game saw Lincoln Brookhart go out with a, an, a leg injury and his night is over as well. So it's been – you lose your top running back and one of your other stellar players on that first drive. It's not the way you wanted to start the season. But, uh, again, it's a team game, and it's, it's up to these other guys to step up. And they couldn't step up there on third and short. And out comes the punting unit early in this first half – second half, excuse me. One of the more important things that happened at halftime, though, was I did get to make somebody's night throwing a quick go blue sign up in the window next to me to a coach from Cedar Rapids, Jefferson. Was that before or after you bought me a sandwich? Did I not ask if anybody needed it? <laughs> There's a, a nice punt by Othmer, and, oh, a nice catch at that. That ball hung up for an eternity. Jefferson makes the fair catch on the play. That's Carter Bronson. And, uh, and what's been fun to watch is th so far the kicking ability <laughs> of yeah. Jackson Othmer. No uh, question. Again, we don't talk about him enough, and uh, he's definitely showing why a lot of colleges are, are knocking on his door. Well, and, you know, sometimes that's the reality of high school football is the kickers, and even college for that matter, Kickers can kind of be under the radar a little bit, even when they're great. But you know Joey Krieger's on him, and he's making sure that he's got everything that he needs to succeed, and I'm sure he will. little screen pass, and uh, the defense is there to stop that before it really gets started. Pick up of maybe one. Speaking of the chicken sandwich, yeah. shout out to Jenny Wade and all the Muskie boosters doing a great job in the concession stand. Brought in Chick-fil-A tonight. Uh, the soccer boosters are there. Quick, uh, again, a nice shout out to... Uh, Josiah Anderson and Jen Smizer behind the behind the counter getting the job done, making sure that the soccer girls have everything they need. Uh, the chicken smelled delicious. It, it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Again, wondering what's going to be open at midnight when we're done here tonight as a uh, second and eight. 
awaits. Man comes in motion and the give up the middle. It's strong running right there, short of the first down. Uh, all right, Muscatine, while we're there, well, we got a quick break. Uh, on Facebook, YouTube, you're watching. Give us a quick shout out with where where you can find food by the time this game gets over around 11 o'clock. Where would you recommend we go stop for a little post game bite? Please. <laughs> Third down and one upcoming for the Jayhawks. Calero has been running hard tonight. And Casey's does not count. Yeah, yeah, no, it doesn't. Nothing against Casey's, just saying. Yeah. Quick pass out to nine out. That, that's going to be enough for a first down. Great job by the defense, but they only needed one. Kind of an interesting call there on third and one. They go with the, the quick pass out in the flat, and, and they get just enough to move the sticks. Well, and I think that's one of those spots where you're just hoping to get enough to reset everything, take a quick breath, and start over rather than trying to push it, push it downfield. 24-21, a, a tight ball game. This is a, a Jayhawk team that lost every game last year but one to the Mercy Rule. They lost uh, in overtime to Davenport Central. It was their only tight game. Here's Calero up the middle, running hard again. Picks up four or five on that first down carry. Justin Hunt says uh, Casey's in contrary brewing. Okay. Other than we ruled out Casey's. Yeah. Contrary is a good answer, though. That is. Maybe somebody can, like, door dash us some. In case we're here with Bailey. <laughs> right. This made me Mindy thirsty, Solstice too. Is here. I think she's on that for us. We have Mindy Jr. running the big magical display board out in uh, left center field out there. Second down, back to throw is Piper. No, oh, a oh. chance at a pick instead. It's going Jefferson's way. Oh, that was inches from a pick six. Instead, the Jayhawks move the sticks. Wow. Meanwhile, final from Tubell Stadium, the Bettendorf Bulldogs reclaim the city title, knocking off Pleasant Valley 30 to 10. We do not play Bettendorf this year. We do play Pleasant Valley. And they come here. So we actually get to broadcast it. Yeah. Throw over the middle, going for the oh. touchdown and just off the fingertips of Carter Bronson. They are not afraid to throw over the top, are no, they? No, I've been really impressed with this uh, this team, yeah. especially the quarterback, Pfeiffer. He's he's showing. And again, I'll tell you this: based confidence. based on the reactions of the coaches next door, it, they're anticipating catching and connecting on these. These aren't just like prayers to, you know, draw you off the line. No, that was a pretty good ball right there. So second down and ten, at the thirty. Not quite in field goal range yet for this Jayhawk team. And that ball. Again, dangerous pass off the fingertips of Nineau. Well, there's a couple of these that uh, Muscatine had a chance to pick off. Third down and 10 upcoming now. Again, this is not a team with a lot of skill on the kicking end. Talking about the Jayhawks. Last year, only one field goal. They didn't make their one field goal attempt to 22 yards. Just one of five in PATs last year. Now they have knocked through their point after touchdowns tonight, but right now we're looking at a 47 yarder if they don't pick up another yard. Back to throw is Pfeiffer. Looking, rolling, rolling, still looking. It's gonna throw it out of bounds. And now decision time for Coach Miles. Fourth and 10 from the 30. You're not gonna punt. Do you kick it? This is the mirror image of what we talked about several but, times in the first half. But they don't have Othmer, so this might be, well, we'll see. Pfeiffer's walking to the sidelines right now, and now he's going back in. So they're going to go for it here on fourth down and 10 in what has become a very big play in this ball game early in this second half. 
He'll send four receivers two each way. Out of the gun, Pfeiffer back to throw. Looking over the middle, now lets it fly. A high floater for nine now. He goes up and can't bring it down. Nice defense out there by Lopez. You know, I was afraid there was going to be a little laundry in the middle of the field there, but we may have gotten away with one. Aiden timed his jump nicely, and uh, Muscatine will get the ball back with 6.18 to go mid about midway through this third quarter. So, yeah, a lot of preseason hype about Pleasant Valley. And that's a, that's a big win right there for the Bulldogs. I think of the Bulldogs, you can't help but think back to that game last year right here. That was a fun one. That was one of my favorite musky football games of all time. There's a nice no run right there. Truesdale finds that hole and has the first down. And now he's slow to get up. And he got some cramping issues there as they go straight to straight to the legs and stretching that out. So that's good to see that it's just cramping issues. Yeah, that was a, a fun game. That was after an 0-2 start to have the Bulldogs here and the, and the history between those two teams. You, you didn't feel good going into it, but the night by, by Ty Kozad and, and what that turned out to be, well, it was a lot of fun last year in, in beating the Bulldogs 37 to 34. Coes had 372 yards. That broke that school single game record at that time. It had four touchdowns. And it still went down to the end. And uh, my favorite memory, and well, a lot of memories in that game, but I remember uh, Coach Wiley getting ejected late in that ball game, and he was. He didn't leave. Like over yeah, no, he, the, he went over by where the, the, the porta-potties the, the porta and the were. And 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 on the way to the new softball diamond, he just kind of hung out and did not stop chit-chatting. No, he was yelling the whole time. Just to take f three or four steps, turn back, said a few more words, took a few more steps, and got outside that fence. And I really wish we would have had a telephoto at the moment, but <laughs> I, we just couldn't quite get in on what he was saying. Oh, well, I have a few guesses as to what he was saying. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Coach, Coach uh, Wiley is nothing but not colorful, uh, when, especially when he's on the losing side. But, well, they're celebrating tonight. And uh, this one uh, over here, meanwhile, it still hangs in the balance as the heat's still on out there and cramping's still an issue as they're uh, trying to work that out. Uh, as we mentioned, this is just game one. Next week we're up in Davenport on a Thursday night. So oh. against a, a central team that was winning their opener, and that uh, we'll check on a final here in a few minutes, but they're up in Clinton tonight. So a uh, quick shout-out to Lincoln. Uh, Karen just posted for us, uh, Lincoln broke his ankle. So That um, is not the news we wanted right is there. Absolutely not the news we wanted, but, of course, uh, the whole Muskie Nation's with you. Yeah, you just had a bad feeling when that happened, and – and you saw his brother go over there and, and wouldn't leave his side. And then you saw Ty go over there, and, and it just, yeah. Hey Karen, thanks for letting us know. Always appreciate having accurate information, even if it's not good news. Yeah, definitely appreciate it. Appreciate that news. Unfortunately, it's not what we wanted to hear. So tough night on the injury front here in the opener. Second and eight now. Muskie's needing a play. Blitz coming. And that play was blown up from the start. There's Jefferson defense showing a bit of life. It's third down and long, and, and someone kind of needs to step up right now for this Muskie offense. And it's tough because you got two of your leaders out. You got a sophomore quarterback. And you're facing a third down and 10. Uh, 
Oh no. Brandy, please tell me you didn't actually tag Francesca in the Sammy Forest. Keep going. Oh, there's a nice break of a tackle and a first down. And there is a flag back in the backfield, however. Well, some strong running right there. Nice play by uh, Seth Reland. However, that's just going to come back. You know, uh, Mr. Vitale, uh, if you're watching right now, I, I know you've been tagging the broadcast. I'm sure we could probably arrange something that if we had, you know, some Vitale's uh, amazing Italian food up here, this could probably be. Oh, my God. The Vitale's yeah. uh, booth. I mean, halftime. I'm sure yeah. we could arrange something. Uh, I'll change my last name to that. <laughs> At this point, I am so hungry. <laughs> Italian sounds amazing. <laughs> it doesn't get any better. Oh. Here's a, another carry and some nice moves. Not quite enough for the first down, however. Ryland uh, got the ball across the 45. Now a Jefferson player slow to get up. Like some chicken Alfredo, maybe? Oh, man. Oh, there's shrimp Alfredo. Uh -huh. Amazing. Oh, boy. Amazing. Killing me right now. So fourth, fourth down and five, a punting situation, and we got ourselves a ball game here on, on night number one. Garlic Ranch. <laughs> I always thought Adrian Arrington should have gone and played for the Hawkeyes. I'd probably well, go tell him, right? I got time. Uh, I, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I remember um, that recruiting battle at the time, though, as I look over there and trying not to think about Italian food. Uh, my stomach grumbles. Folks, this is what you get with local television. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's uh, what you get. Yeah. All right. Well, Othmer's been kind of the, the star of the show here tonight, and he's got another chance. High snap. Let's the boot go. A high punt. It's going to just land and hopefully take a good bounce. Doesn't. Does die out there, though. Not a bad kick. The ball uh, settles in at about the 33-yard line. And the Jayhawks will get it back, trying to take the lead back. We've got 4.05 to go in this third quarter. And, and again, this is I, I don't think this is quite the game any of us would have anticipated when we sat down here tonight. No. It, it was, yeah, it was kind of the that fear out there, right? What What happens? If you if you lose Kozad, it, where does the offense come from? And again, they're doing a good job. They're not it. doing a bad job. It and it's it's nothing against Dane Truesdale at all. He's doing phenomenal. Right. But but it shows you he's hitting those holes and he's getting eight, ten, twelve yards. Whereas, and again, nothing against the young man. He's doing his job. But but Kozad's got that that second gear, right? right. Those would be home well, runs. And, and and again, this goes back to an offensive line that's popping openings for. I mean, I might even be able to get through some of these. Well, let's not go there. I mean, I I got my running shoes on. I could do it. Well, run over and give me, me some Italian, and then we'll talk. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, if you guys could only see the representative from the athletic department in the booth right now. I won't say which one it is, but oh. let's just say she can barely keep herself together at the moment. You know, if you and I had a race right now, it, we would be here till midnight just to <laughs> get the full 100 yards. I mean, uh, <laughs> we I don't know. I'll bet you I could go 100 yards straight down oh, off the back from here man. pretty quick. Uh, I, I would need to take a break or two. <laughs> now, if you put some fatalities in the end zone. I'm running nonstop <laughs> at this point. And oh. if, if they're not a sponsor by next week, I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> uh, I'm so tempted to text him right now. <laughs> uh, looks like we're heading back to the field, so we should be yeah. right here in just a minute. With some more resume. cramping issues there, and we got that settled. And here we go. Jayhawks back out there. The defense needs to go. make another stand.
Little jet sweep, kind of looking for one more to go. Nice fill on defense, and oh, oh, the big hit. Oh, good job by the defense there, and, and filling and coming out to uh, make that tackle Eli is Trozen. Uh, Eli Trozen, yes. <laughs> Pancake tackle with that. Big Eli feeling good right now. <laughs> Another run, it's got Laron. Oh boy, a lot of open field there. This is trouble folks, to the 40, to the 30. It won't make it all the way. The defense ran him down, but that is a big play right there. And there's a flag on the field as I check around the 50-yard line. This might, uh, yep, it will. Holding on the uh, Jayhawks. Now that was at the 50, so. It won't come all the way back. It won't come all the way back, but it will come back enough. Big break again, another huge penalty for the Jayhawks. And again, like you said, that's a, a discipline thing. And, you know, it's something that you th you hope that uh, the coaches over at Jefferson can yeah, take a, take a page from this and go, okay, all right, guys, here's where we can make some improvements, right? This is a focus thing. This is a – it's a first game of the season thing. Yeah. But, again, it's, it's a – one of those things, winning teams find ways to win, right? And, and and I'm not trying to call Jefferson a losing team, but they've lost a team that's lost 26 in a row finds ways to lose sometimes. And, and right now, the penalties are there. And there's a nice play by the QB, a little keeper. That's enough to get the first down. There's an Iowa Hawkeye play right there. Second and one, quick up to the line of scrimmage. And Pfeiffer keeps it himself, moves the sticks. And again, having never been an actual football coach, I, I would still like to think that I'd be looking at that going, okay, these are fixable things. These are like mental things that we can attack. You know, it's not like we're getting outrun, not like we're getting yeah. – that's all things that you can fix in practice. Back to throw, Pfeiffer. A little uh, running back swing pattern, and that one over his head. Well, that was a, a nice play right there. They sent the receivers deep, tried to clear out space for the back. Just uh, overshot them a bit and incomplete. So 2.55 on the clock. A big possession right now for Jefferson. And for that matter, the Muscatine defense as they try to get that ball back in their control with the lead. Tight formation, man comes in motion, give to Calero. He escapes the first tackler and then can't do much more after that. A host of muskies bringing him down, led by uh, Andy Frankie. Big play upcoming now, third down and nine. Trips to the top of your screen. Pfeiffer, play action, rolls out, has the man out there. Got to stop him, hasn't got the sticks yet, and he does. Second effort right there. Gets the job done for the Jayhawks. Carter Bronson, nice effort, moves those chains. And the Jayhawks reset first and 10 at the 41. Pfeiffer looking to throw again. High. The ball still out there. And the ball almost oh. picked off. Lost at the last second. Oh, my goodness. He'll be dreaming about that one tonight. Nightmare is the opportunity right there to make that play. Cesar Guerrero, that ball just, man, tipped 
off the back then, just never hit the ground. It was right there for the take, and he had it. Just lost it last second. Oh. For those of you on PCTV, welcome back. Sorry, I got a little. We went over the scheduled time on the channel. We did. And uh, it, when we do that, it, we, we got to, like, let it cycle out, turn it back on. So, welcome back. Going deep. Chance out there and off the fingertips. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful opportunity by Pfeiffer. Just could not be brought down right there by LJ Nynow. And the Muskies escape again. Third down in 10 upcoming now. Big sigh of relief right now on that musky side of the ball. 147 left, still in the third quarter. There's time, but you just feel this is a, a huge possession right now for the Jayhawks. They'll send trips off to the bottom of your screen. Pfeiffer out of the gun. Rolls out, looks, still looks. Nobody there. Pressure now gets away, still free. Now lets it go down the sidelines. The ball Flies out of bounds. There is a penalty, however, in the secondary. The flag sits at about the 15-yard line. That might be defensive holding. Well, anytime you extend a play that long, the D-backs have to cover for that long. That raises the uh, chances of a defensive holding, and I think that's what we're going to get right now on the Muskies. It is a, a penalty. They signaled interference. And that's one of those catch-22s. You know, you love the fact that they weren't able to get the ball out of the pocket quickly. You love that coverage was there. But then it just creates more opportunities for something bad to happen. You no, know, good job by, by Pi for keeping the play alive. And a new set of downs for the Jayhawks. 137 left in this third quarter. And the scoring machines have slowed to a crawl. That pass caught. I now somehow hung on to that as that he was, was going down. It was a rocket. He used his hands. He used his knees. He used every part of his body there to corral that ball. And once again, a first down, and now the the Jayhawks are in field goal range, which would tie it. There, they want the lead, and the Muskies need to uh, make a play. Trips off to the top of your screen. Man comes in motion. Pfeiffer will hand off. Looks for a hole to the ten, to the five. Breaks a tackle and into the end zone. Touchdown. Duante Washington, the senior running back, has the Jayhawks back on top. Big extra point, and it's blocked. That keeps this that, a three-point ball game. That very well could be the play of the game, depending on how things shake out. Definitely. You got a, a great kicker right now. You keep it a three-point deficit. That's a huge block. Not quite sure. Couldn't quite see who got the paw up to deflect it. But, yep, 27 to 24. Now Jayhawks on top, 123 left here. In this third quarter, we'll be right back on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support Big Brothers, Big Sisters. We are looking for a zero-turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? 
in the store. <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero-turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local house. Luckily, our audio wasn't on, so you guys didn't hear me absolutely drop my mic all over everything. <laughs> I heard it. Okay. 123 left. Uh, the Muskies need to come back here. This is getting a little late in this ball game to be behind. Late in the night or late in the ball game? Both. That ball gets into the end zone. And that was That's too bad right there because Thompson had some room to run. However, it will start at the 20-yard line on the touchback. Now comes the offense, Truesdale and leading the uh, the way right now. Muskies haven't scored yet in the second half. Wing formation, again showing blitz and again well, you got to change the, the snap count or something because they are reading that, and they're in that backfield before the, our young quarterback has a chance to do anything. James makes the stop, a loss of just one as we've reached the final minute here in this third quarter. And the Muskies need to find some offense right now without their star running back who's out of this game since uh, injuring his hamstring in the first quarter. Have the give and not a whole lot of room there. And up comes third down now. Another no gain on the play. Angel Martinez. It's back to the line of scrimmage maybe. Third and 11, ball at the 19-yard line. And they don't have to get off a play here, and you might want to just take this to the quarter or draw up a good one. And that's just what the, the Muskies will do. So one quarter to go, and the Jayhawks, who've lost 26 straight ball games, find themselves ahead in this one, 27 to 24. Fourth quarter next here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support big brothers, big sisters. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone could make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. You know Rivo as X. Back here on the campus of Muscatine High School, Muskies. Big favorites coming into this opener tonight against the uh, Jefferson team that hadn't won, well, what, four seasons? Three, three full seasons. So late October of 2019, their last victory. Right now, they're on top, 27-24, and the Muskies facing a third and 11 on their own 19-yard line. They'll go full house backfield. Sophomore quarterback under center. Gives the ball off a little of room there, and Martinez close to a first down. I think he got it. What makes that run even more impressive is I, I couldn't quite see, but it looked like there was at least nine or ten guys in the box. 
And that was a great job by the, the lineman blocking downfield. Martinez didn't break away. He just fouled those lead blockers and, and just did enough to move the sticks. And right now, that's a big victory on third and 11. You're able to run for 12 yards. And now a flag thrown after that play. And this might, now a second flag thrown, and that's not good right there as Evan Frankie got caught with like a late hit. He argued that, and then you can't argue with the referee, and mm -hmm. that drew a second flag. Well, I mean, you can, but you never win. Well, no, ask Aaron Wiley. It doesn't end well. You know, we actually have had this conversation with the, the younger kids. I've never seen a referee or an umpire change their mind when a player said, hey, you know what, I think you were wrong. Yeah. Never seen it happen, uh, ever. Have you? No. no. So why? Just why? Now, that said, if I was on the field, I can guarantee you I couldn't keep my mouth shut either. <laughs> So they'll sort all this out slowly. This could be really bad when it's all said and done. You got a personal foul against the Muskies and then a unsportsmanlike against the Muskies. Uh, both against the same player there and we'll see just how many yards they march off here. It's going to be a half the distance kind of thing because the ball is at the 32-yard line. I'm guessing you'll mark it around the 16 then. Actually, they'll, they'll mark it all, all the way back inside the 10. So just a deadly penalty right there, pair of penalties. And the tough thing is what, what do you do in this situation? It, where you're pinned back on the field, you want to run. You, you almost, if but you have a you screen pass, I don't know. Yeah. You know, your first instinct is, instinct is run, but that's – they're going to know you're doing it. They're coming They've been timing it. Again. There's the game. we got another penalty on the play as Truesdale maybe got a couple yards. And that's probably coming back. Clip called. An emphatic call by the uh, official down there. And I, I think you might want to just decline that penalty if you're Jefferson at this point. Second and 35, it would just be half the distance. It's a three-yard penalty. Why not take the down? And but they will take the penalty and give the Muskies another chance here on second down. Ball back at the three-yard line. they got to get to the... 42, so you're looking at 39 yards, second and 39. If you decline that penalty, it would have been third and 25 maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, the, the Muscatine offense isn't really – now they're going to – they're going to – what are they going to do? Are they declining? Well, they moved the ball back to where it was. The, the yard marker on the field says third down, so I'm guessing they declined it, but I thought he got it outside the 10 on the run. Maybe we could make a 
quick request to the athletic department to get a mic on those guys. I feel like a mistake was made there by the officials, but it only cost a couple yards, and it was third and 34, so, you know. Let me get those, get those conversations piped right on up here so we're not people want to know. Not caught guessing, but, yeah. Well, it is fourth down, and the punting unit is coming out. And now we'll stop the clock again because there's equipment on the field. This place, the equipment will get you every time. Well. Uh, short punt. High. Hopefully it takes, takes a good bounce. And the coaches next door is screaming at their players to get away. Good roll there, but only out to the 47-yard line. And now the defense really needs to come up with something as the Jayhawks had the ball back with the lead. And just 10 minutes left on that clock. See how aggressive Coach Miles wants to be right now for the Jayhawks with the lead and the ball. And they will hand it off. And again, a lot of room out there and thrown out of bounds, rodeo style. And now we got a flag again away from the ball. And I think that's going to be uh, against the Jayhawks as they're looking more guilty right now than the Muscatine players are. Carter Bronson, I think, got caught with a late hit. So right now the uh, the ball is marked right at the first down sticks, but that is a penalty on Bronson and the Jayhawks. And that will march it back. So quick. Yeah. Quick side note. Oh, Speaking we got of plenty rodeos, of time. It doesn't have to be quick. Speaking of rodeos. Yeah. If you are a rodeo fan, tomorrow, Muscatine County Fair, Wild yeah. Horse Productions. Tickets are 15 bucks. Head out. Battle for Liberty Rodeo. Probably be some good food at the fair, too. Uh, you know, there was a lot of great food at the fair <laughs> this year, and, you know, they, they always do a great job. They take care of us out there. Just saying. Uh, Just yeah, saying. they do. <laughs> hey, you know what? You should come out our booth, like, right in the grandstand, right in the middle of it. Yeah. You, you can hang out there all week. Nice. No more than about 30 feet away. Funnel cakes. First and 10, Jayhawks. Trips off to the right, back to throws Pfeiffer. Swings it out to his back and dancing around looking for some yardage. Gets right at midfield. Gained maybe two, two to two and a half, three yards on the play. And that clock now under 10 minutes to go. So for those of you watching up in Cedar Rapids, if you are rodeo fans, West Liberty is just on the other side of Iowa City, about 10, 12 miles. Come on down. Muscatine would love to have you. Piper again throwing that uh, a lateral pass and nice play out there on the defensive end by Aiden Lopez. A third down and long upcoming for the Jayhawks and really a must stop right now for the Muskies defense. Yeah, you absolutely have to keep this to a one score game at this point with the slowdown of the offense. There's no way you want to get into a position where you've got to put points on the board twice. Trip set to the top. Pfeiffer out of the gun. Man comes in motion. Back to throw. Little screen pass. Almost picked off. The ball falls to the ground. And great defense out there by the Muskies. As Cooper Yao got a hand on that ball. Almost corralled it in for an interception. Nonetheless, fourth down, and the Jayhawks bring out the punting unit. You know, if I call a fake punt on every punt, 
all season. They are not faking this. I might get one. Okay. Well. I'm not. But. Uh-oh. Trouble. The ball's loose. The ball is loose, and it will be Muscatine's ball in Jefferson territory. And there is a big play. The bobbled ball. Punter couldn't handle that snap. Eli Trozen right there in the middle of it again. And the Muskies get the ball inside the 40-yard line. Well, that's the break you need right there. Hopefully, we'll spark some life into this offense. Get some momentum right now. All the momentum's been over on that far sideline. But here's an, here's an opportunity. Get this lead back. Put the pressure on the team that's lost 26 straight games. I would love to see one just go, like, up over the top. Oh, just... They're just timing that snap so well right now. I, what I would love, yeah, I, uh, they got to change things up right now. I don't know if you, you get up to the line of scrimmage and you change the formation like they, like they like to do sometimes. Just something to get this defense off kilter right now because right now that Jayhawk defense is in the backfield way too quick against this uh, team. You know, I've seen a team from up kind of northeast of here, a uh, level above this. They'll do a thing where they, like, all get in a circle and go around and around. And that that was a mistake by the center, I believe, as that ball was snapped and no other muskie moved. And uh, right now the muskies are, are lucky they hung on to that football. That was an ugly, ugly play. All right, well, third and 15. This could be a, a two-down situation. Sometimes we do things just to poke the bear. And there's a timeout taken. And, uh, well... Got to come up with something right now, Chris. Third down and, and 15. Seven minutes to go. So it's not a must-score situation, but it, it almost feels that way. It does. I, you know, it's a momentum thing. You know, it almost feels like if we, if we can break this one way or another, you can get the ball moving, maybe find get, – get one of those nice – big gaps open again but we can only do that if we can get them off kilter well, we'll see what coach Hawkins draws up and it's again this is a situation where you don't have to get all 15 yards you can use this as a two down situation here with where the ball is if you can get the ball to about the 35 right now you can just get 8 to 10 yards on this you can set yourself up nicely on like a fourth and five, fourth and six. But you can't let the Jayhawks just get in the backfield like they have here in the second half. Here comes that blitz again, and that's a nice play right there. Some room to run, and there we go. All right, nice run by Martinez. And again, set up a fourth down and manageable right now. I like that play. Jefferson was just clogging the middle, coming in the middle. You ran something outside, and, and it worked. It got you some yardage. As the official moves the ball back a yard. And uh, now kind of the biggest play of the game right here. Six and a half minutes to go. Fourth down and eight. Upcoming ball at the 38. Sophomore quarterback gives off. Got to break some tackles, and they're just not going to do that. And the Jayhawks take over on downs. Seth Ryland there, just nowhere to maneuver. 
Great job by that Jayhawk defense filling the gaps, and Jefferson will take over possession with 6.15 left on the clock, up by three. Still time for the Muskies. they got to get a three and out. Now, last time out, Jefferson actually rather aggressive. They put the ball in the air a few times. This time out, maybe not so much. We'll see. It doesn't feel like you want the, the clock Clock's stopping. down to two. They just get it off in time. They will hand off up the middle, and not a bad run right there, about three yards on first down. You know, and the tough part is it's going to be tough for Coach Hawkins to put some extra people on the line because they do throw the ball over the top enough that you can't get caught. But you just got to take your chances right now, and and I think you got to sell out on the run. You, you know this team right now is going to want to run some clock. You can't let them gash you up the middle like they have at times tonight. You just got to sell out, make them throw the ball. Who knows? I mean, they put up some passes that uh, have come close to interceptions. Pfeiffer has thrown one pick tonight, so if they want to chance it, let them take the chance. But you've got to stop the run right now as, again, we're dealing with more cramping issues on the field, and that will, at the very least, stop the clock for Muscatine. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back as soon as they're ready to play. Expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. We are looking for a zero-turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero-turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020. Back here, second down, big play upcoming. Jefferson sends a man in motion. Now a second man in motion. They'll give to the back, and the defense fills nicely. So third down upcoming, a huge play in this ball game. Third down, and we'll call it five. Ball just outside the 40-yard line. Five and a half on the clock. Muskie still have two timeouts at their disposal. Jefferson has all theirs. You know, if they're going to be running the ball inside, I'd love to see one of the guys just get a nice punch on the ball and pop it out. Piper will hand it off up the middle and not enough. Fourth down situation. It's fourth and two, but just how aggressive does Coach Miles want to be right now? He's got the offense out on the field. This is a huge play. They're, they're lining they're up to go for it. Maybe they're just trying to draw him off sides. That's and not now a idea. player ran out on the field late, and that's going to be a, a penalty on, on Jefferson, I believe. But instead, okay, a timeout was called, so no flag. They'll pick up the flag. That was going to be a late substitution there, but the Jayhawks used their timeout. And uh, now they'll talk about it, fourth down and two. This is, this is a spot where you'll see teams try to draw the other team offsides, and it's, it's a smart play. Going for it, I don't know if that's a smart play. But again, I mean, what do you got to lose? Hey, hey. That's why we're up here, right? It is. <laughs> That's exactly what I was just uh, thinking. Coach Miles has played in the NFL, so we're, we'll defer to him on this one. We'll see how it shows out. But now, uh, Again, I'm going to go back to all my experience. I'm going to actually go to NCAA football 
And this is back when, like, Denard Robinson, you just, like, seriously throw it up in the air and let it go. Again, are we going video games now? We are. It's <laughs> <sighs> It's algorithms. Well, well, right now, that timeout, hopefully the Muscatine coaching staff told them eight times to Sunday, do not jump off sides. Yeah. Make your wall. Don't. Don't push it. Well, here's your ball game. Pfeiffer does snap it. And oh, wow. He's loose down the sideline. 30, 25. And what a call right there. What a call. Everyone centered on the quarterback and a massive humanity. And out of nowhere. Jefferson, first down. I tell you what, that's heartbreaking for for the Muskies right there. But what a call! Can't argue with the results, man. That Might not use that one again all season, but boy, they drew that one up nice, and now it's now it's getting tough. Some confusion right there, but a nice play. Tackle at the line of scrimmage, second down. Clock at 4:20 to go. And again, you got those two timeouts. You don't want to use them quite yet, but the, you can't save them too much longer. Glock dips under the four minute mark. Jefferson patiently uh, comes up to the line of scrimmage. Play clock down to seven. Pfeiffer gets it off. There's the handoff. Got to bring him down. And he is brought down about the 21 yard line. Lots. And now the quick timeout taken by the Muskies. Stops the clock at 338 to go. Third down and that is actually that's perfect right there. You didn't waste your time. You called your time out. You set up third down. That's uh, right out of clock management 101 right there by that Muskie coaching staff. But once again, now you're you're facing. Wow. And, and does you know, Jefferson kick a field goal if you stop him here to go up six? I. Do you run some more time off, try and pin him uh, back further? You know, I mean, this might be four down territory for the Jayhawks just trying to get that first down and, and win the game. And, you know, this is one of those times where the coach knows their team, right? Um, they know they know whether it's a four down situation. They know whether they can rely on their defense. They know what their kicker is going to do. So we're going to find out what these coaches yeah. think their teams are. Well, the kicker's over there practicing, getting ready right now in case he is called on. But right now, if you're the Muskies, he's got to find a way to get a stop, maybe punch the ball out. Pfeiffer's out of the gun. He's got four receivers in the set. He's going to throw it. Looking up top. Now pulls it down. Still looking. And will throw it out of bounds. And, oh, that's beautiful right there because it stops the clock. Now, that's a curious call on that's their end. That's extremely curious. Unless, you know, here's the thing, though. If you're playing for the win, and that's a call. I mean, you're not playing to run out the clock. You're playing. You're thinking that your guys can make the play. They can put it in the end zone and put this thing away. So, yeah. It, an interesting call backfires on Coach Miles there, but what does he do here on fourth down? Must stop for the Muskies. My guess is if he did it on third. you got to put the ball in the air you're, now. You're going to see it again on fourth. Trips to the left. Pfeiffer back to throw. Let's it loose over the middle. He's got a man. Did he haul it in? Touchdown, Jayhawks. And that is a dagger. They've been waiting to connect on one of those all night. 
Well, what a catch out there. And Coach Arrington next door is throwing high fives around to his brethren in the, the coaching box, just like he used to do back in the day. Cedar Rapids, Washington. I'll forget about that other school, but that's how he did it at Cedar Rapids, Washington. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Extra point is up, and that one's it's not going to be good. That was pushed somewhere. So 3.24 to go. The Muskies trailing 33-24. We'll be right back on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. 20 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever... Back here in Muscatine where the odds are stacked against the home squad right now in a huge way, trailing 33-24. Just 324 to go. And uh, a musky team that has not scored in the second half needs to do it twice in the last three minutes. Thompson will get a chance for a return, and if ever there was a time, and now's the time. Thompson breaks a couple, still on his feet, out to the 40, out to the 47, and there's a spark right there. Thompson gives the Muskies good field position. Well, you got to kind of put the ball up in the air now, and you got yourself a sophomore quarterback playing his first game. It, it hasn't it, thrown much tonight. Do, you know, here's here's the question. Do you? I mean, your game is breaking long runs. And I would I granted, love to put the ball in the air and see what can happen here. Three, five, eight, nine, nine guys. Back to throw, up the middle, into triple coverage, and receiver falls down. Well, Thompson looked to, to maybe be open on that play. Instead, went over the middle for Yao. Yao kind of tripped on the turf, and second down upcoming now for the Muskies. I, I feel like it wasn't a bad throw. Hmm. He's got an arm. We, we know the kid's got an arm. You're in this situation. you you got to put it up in the air. Clock down to 3.09, second and 10. Thompson splits off to the left. Throw is to Thompson. Thompson can't corral it. The throw was low. And now we got third and 10 upcoming. Well, the crowd a bit stunned right now. This is not the way Muskie Faithful saw this one going tonight. They're running out of time. And here's the handoff on third and 10. And maybe two yards on the play is Seth Ryland. If you're going to do that, you got to get to the outside and at least get out of bounds. Clock does continue to run under three minutes now, and you're facing a fourth and eight. Last chance here in this ball game. Got to find a way to get that first down. Thompson brings the play in. Jefferson faithful that made the long trip from the west side of Cedar Rapids. So they're as loud as they've ever been right now as they can uh, smell victory. And now we got ourselves a whistle. And a timeout taken 
by the Jayhawks. Uh, we'll, we'll keep it here on this one as Jefferson defense one win away from that, uh, that victory, that elusive victory that they've uh, won it now for, for quite some time. Thought they had it last year when they played Davenport Central. That game went to overtime. Heartbreaker up at Kingston Stadium. Got another chance at it right now. This one looking pretty good for the boys wearing the white and baby blue over there. Muskies got to gotta find something here. Fourth down and eight. First job at hand is getting a first down. Ball sits on the right hash right at the 50-yard line. Teams are back. Uh, coach and staff still talking to the officials over there. Slow to get back on the field. Now we're set. Jayhawk faithful making some noise. Musky faithful biting at the fingertips. Here we go. Fourth down and eight. Two receivers out to the left. Back to throw. Got some time. Let's it oh, go up the middle. And there's a flag, flag. on the play. Incomplete, but. And that's the advantage of oh, taking those shots downfield. You, if you don't take the shots downfield, you don't give the other team the opportunity to make a mistake. Well, the odds still stacked against the Muskies, but they Absolutely. are still alive right now. 2.18 on the clock. First down. You need a touchdown and a field goal to win this ball game. Doesn't have to come in that order. You could always take the field goal first. We'll see. The ball marked all the way down now. See where they'll uh, officially mark it here around the 35 yard line. One timeout remaining for both teams. Thompson split to the bottom of your screen. Yao splits wide up to the top. Blitz coming. Handoff, Ryland goes nowhere. You got to get back to the line of scrimmage kind of quick here. Clock ticking down to the two minute mark. It will be under two minutes by the time this next play snapped. Second down and 12. Is this a spot where you consider giving up a down, get up there and spike it? Not anymore. Okay. Got to go though. They got any tricks in the bag, this is about the time to use it. Halfback option pass, something. Back to throw, swing pass. Looks for some room and uh, gets back across the original line of scrimmage. Clock down to 125 and counting. Now the clock stopped as the player slow to get up. The Jayhawk on the on the field still, so that's a break right there for the Muskies, as uh, we'll stop the clock with 1:23 left in this ball game. Well, you're looking at what uh, 51 yard field goal from there. Oathmer can make that. It's third down. I feel like you got you got to take a. Uh, one shot deep here and then take the field goal unit out there and try to make this a one score game. Welcome to varsity football, Gage Curtis. Sophomore in his first start. Now they'll run the clock. Curtis back, trying to elude pressure, gets away from one man, gets away from another. Going to keep it yep. and run out of bounds, which is smart. He's yep. out of the 30-yard 30 30 line. Now do you kick the field goal or go for it? It's a fourth and five, and it's going to be about a 47-yard attempt if you get Othmer out there. Othmer is on the sideline. He's looking over at the coaching staff, and the coaching staff is signaling in a play. They're going to go for it here, fourth down and five. 
It all comes down to this play. Last fourth down. A penalty kept the game alive. What will happen here? Clock mm. stopped. Do you try and draw him off? 106 left. Back to throw. Got a little time. Got to get rid of it. The time's gone away. The ball is loose. It's a fumble. The ball's still loose. And that's going to be a turnover on downs. And that's going to be the ball game. The Jefferson Jayhawks are going to leave with that elusive W. And uh, the Muskies are going to be watching film tomorrow wondering what, what happened. Not the way they wanted their season to start. Baptism by fire for the young quarterback. He'll have better days for sure. Not that today was bad, but it's uh, it's tough sledding in your first varsity start. Comes down to a, a fourth quarter try to come back. Couldn't do it, and the Jayhawks. Jayhawks are celebrating over there. That losing streak is no more. They are 1-0, and uh, it's been a long time coming. Congratulations to the guys from the west side of Cedar Rapids. It's going to be a fun bus ride back home for them tonight. There are, there are things to build on for sure. Doesn't feel right, like it right now for the Muskies. There are there are some good things in this game, and they'll find that there, in the film. There's there's building blocks there, but there is, and you know we all go back to, you know that first quarter you lose two big keys and you still stay in the game. You know it would have been really easy for the Muskies to roll over, and just kind of like call it a night. It's definitely not what they did. And uh, again, as you alluded to, very first play on offense and Lincoln Brookhart goes down with uh, what we are told uh, reported uh, by his family is a broken ankle and it's a tough way to start your senior season on, on the very first play from offense yeah just heartbreaking and then the second play on offense looked to be amazing a 70 yard 71 yard touchdown run as uh, the Jayhawks are going to run over and celebrate with their fans. It's been a long time coming for them. Second play from offense, a 71-yard touchdown run by Ty Kozad. But uh, that ended badly as well as he, he ended up injuring his, what we believe uh, to be hamstring on the play. And, and, and you hope it's just uh, a little bit of a tweak maybe. Yeah, he, he a little was, bit of a cramp that <laughs> went too far, and it's not something that's going to derail him yeah, for we, any amount of time we, this season. We will hope and uh, pray on that tonight for sure. As a, a good young man, a, a lot on the line right now for him and, and for this team. And you, you don't know, but you, you live to fight another day, and that next day, uh, I guess in a good way, comes a day earlier this next week. They'll play on Thursday night at uh, Davenport Central and. You know, the dream is, uh, you know, it's, as Ty told me the other day, is, is to make the playoffs, and that got a lot tougher tonight, losing this game, but there's still a road to get there. you got to find five, five to six wins, and you still got eight games to get those. Which is, it, it's doable. It's just, as you said, yeah. it's definitely a tougher, tougher task. And as we look to next Thursday, we do want to remind you guys, we do have Muskie Volleyball Tuesday night, 6.30, here on the Discover Muskie Sports Network and PCTV. They'll host Pleasant Valley. Again, that's 6.30 Tuesday night. Uh, we'll have a bunch of fun. Uh, Toby Lehman and I will be on the mics for you, and I can't wait to get in the gym. Hopefully the fans are blowing, and hopefully it's cooled off a little bit by then because it gets kind of warm up in the, uh, the upper seats up there. But looking forward to it. Thank you all for watching.
Roland, do you have any parting wisdom? Uh, you know, a, a tough one, but uh, you, there'll be another day, and that day will come Thursday, and that'll be a very, you know, another winnable opportunity for, for the Muskies, and, and hopefully Ty's okay and good to go because, uh, you know, this is a, a different team with him on the field, and there's no doubt about it. It is, and you know what? The big thing is tomorrow's another day. You're going to wake up. The alarm's going to go off, or maybe it's not. And the key is you've got to attack – the day with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. If we do that the rest of the season, good things will happen. Yeah, it's just the beginning of the road. It just uh, took a detour we didn't expect to take, and uh, congratulations to the Jefferson Jayhawks. You know, it's it, we mentioned it a lot tonight, and and maybe to the ire of their fans, but it's worth repeating in that this is an accomplishment. This has been since 2019 since they won a football game. And that's, that's uh, hard for those guys to keep coming up, keep showing up to work, and keep believing to get the victory when, when you haven't done it for as long as they haven't done it. And, and they did it tonight. So, so congratulations to them. They, uh, they're, they're on the right track. You know, Coach Miles uh, took some chances tonight, and they, they are much improved. So congratulations to those guys. And I, I don't think this is going to be their last win this year. That's a team that's going to uh, – get another one or two so uh you know good luck to them and uh as for the muskies go there'll be better days for sure and yep. and uh that starts on thursday yep on that note everybody have a great night a great weekend and we will see you tuesday night and actually if you want to connect before that monday morning on the muscatine today show we'll see you then have a great night